Welcome to the Agent Program Initiate. I'll be waiting for you inside. Follow the lights, please. Majestic, isn't it? I'm Diana. I'll take you to your quarters. Someone likes to keep secrets. Secrets are our stock and trade. Besides, from what I hear, you have a few of your own. I'm not like you, in case you're wondering. I'm in the Handler program. Agents and handlers work in unity. You know the expression, know your enemy? Well, that part is my job. Knowing your enemy is only half the victory. I know. You also need to know yourself. I'm working on it. I read your case file. Impressive work. Partly textbook, but I suppose field work never is. Tell me, what did it feel like, taking lives? Random. Disordered. Is that why you came here? Why you let us test you? Maybe I'm not the only one being tested. Well, we are here. Basic training starts at 0600 hours. I should leave you to prepare. Are you sure about this? I am. There are no second chances, Miss Burnwood. Not here. I choose him. May I inquire why? A blank slate? Antisocial? Apathetic and unresponsive? No doubt the boy shows promise, but... Perhaps I see possibility where others see limitation. Isn't that what a handler does, sir? We'll see. Anyone can kill Miss Burnwood. He still remembers nothing? If he does, he's not sharing. We will check up on his story. The hospital in Romania. In the meantime, keep him under close watch. Welcome to Advanced Mission Training. This operation originally took place in Sydney. The target was Calvin Ritter, infamous cat burglar, also known as the Sparrow. You will need to infiltrate the yacht, isolate and eliminate your target and exfiltrate, all without arousing suspicion. And remember, as an ICA agent, you are the most dangerous person in any room. But blunt force will get you nowhere in this business. And a true assassin never calls attention to himself. Good luck, Initiate. As previous tests have established, you exhibit an unusual level of enhanced sensory perception. Use your instinct now to sense the position and movement of people around you and identify your target. Your target is down. Now head calmly towards an exit. Advanced mission training complete. And may I say, elegantly done, Initiate. I guess my hunch was right about you. I look forward to the final test. How did you know? I told you he had talent. His stats are off the charts. Such skills and reflexes. They could only be the result of previous training. Power like that, with no moral restraint. He could be dangerous. I thought that was rather the point, sir. All agents have weak spots, Miss Burnwood. Pressure points to keep them in check. But this one... Perhaps it would be better to just... Give me a chance, sir. Give him a chance. I will take full responsibility. Very well. It's your show. Welcome back, Initiate. As an ICA agent, every challenge you face can be overcome in multiple ways. Complete this exercise again, this time attacking it from a different angle. Vary your strategy. Improvise. We will be watching.
You don't waste any time, do you? Eh, suppose on a boat like this. This way, sir. Mr. Ritter will see you upstairs. I must say, really impressive. Nice day for it, isn't it? Well, I was hoping to go. Mr. Ritter, I'm tearing off. Of. Mr. Norfolk, we meet at last. So good of you to fly down. Shall we? Hey, the way. What's up? Just a moment, Mr. Norfolk. Give me a second. It's just on the tip of my tongue. I could have sworn it was stolen from the Stoiva son. Look at all those stupid snobs. Okay. Once again, great work, Initiate. This exercise is available for as long as you need. When you are ready to advance, you have only to let us know. I just got word. Romania was a dead end. You're saying that he lied? Place is real enough. Deserted. But we found no trace that your man was ever there. Or anyone else, for that matter. Someone erased his steps. Hmm. 
We'll keep digging, of course. But frankly, it's as if the Earth just spat him out. Are you still determined? Does it matter? I was told there'd be no second chances. Don't believe everything you hear, Miss Burnwood. My decision stands. Very well. I'll be watching. The final test is based on an authentic 1979 mission. The high point of training Director Soda's career as an active agent. The target was Jasper Knight, a famous US chess master exposed as a Soviet spy. Soda's caught up with Knight at a military airfield in Cuba and eliminated him against all odds. This will be your objective as well. Now listen carefully. ICA exams aren't normally this difficult. Not only was the airfield a virtual fortress, but he even added additional guards. Sodas wants you to fail. He considers you a threat, and this way, your unfortunate exit from the program won't raise any eyebrows. Well, if he thinks we're bowing out, he is sorely mistaken. Good luck, Initiate. Did you print out the safety protocol for the jet? Eh, it's on the clipboard. Look, do we really have to do this, all things considered? We're putting a pasty-faced egghead inside a Mach 3 fighter jet. Yeah, I kind of think we do. Jeez. Get it, get it. Safety first and all that. I don't care which one of you does hey, it. It's, man it's me, I'm hearing the suspicious boss sounds. Get it done. So. Jasper Knight is leaving Cuba on a Soviet fighter jet, but first he needs to test the jet's safety features. Huh. Say you could somehow tamper with the ejector seat mechanism. You could presumably get Knight to trigger his own demise. Hmm. That might just work. Yes, sir. It's like a city. Huh. Hey. Stay safe out there, secure. <laughs> to set the trap. The ejector seat mechanism has been disabled. You may need a tool to re-enable it. How's the mechanic today? Jesper Knight, we gotta go over the safety protocol. Follow me, please. Oh, must we really? Is it dangerous? Well, it must be, mustn't it? Why else would there be a safety protocol? I'm not crazy about airplanes. Is it going to do that thing where it flips on its head? I don't like that one bit. Not one bit. Don't worry. You're in good hands. This way, please. Okay, Mr. Knight. Climb in the cockpit, please. Uh, all right, easy, one, one step at a time. Step one, strap yourself in. Uh, okay, all strapped in. Step two, locate the ejector seat handle. Uh, 
Yes, found it. Step three. Pull the ejector seat handle. Right. Here it goes. Pull. Target down. You did it. Now head towards an exit. Oh my god, did that just happen? That shit was definitely not part of the plan. Hey, nice threads, buddy. Congratulations, Agent. You are cleared for field duty. I hope you know what you just did. The chopper leaves at dawn. Now get out of my sight. So what happens now? You go back into the world. Disappear, stay on your own and on the move. When we need you, we will contact you. And so does. He played his hand, and he lost. He cannot touch us now. <laughs> Still, I can't believe we beat him at his own game. If you know your enemy. <laughs> Quite right. I should tell you, the trail went dead after Romania. Our team found no records of any kind, no name, nothing. I think they called me 47. That's not a name. So make it one. All right. Agent 47. Apparently, Jasper Knight is demanding that his girlfriend accompanies him to the Soviet Union, and he refuses to leave until he gets affirmation from his superiors in Moscow. The call will come through in the restricted, but otherwise unguarded, radio room.
Follow me. Lubyanka's on the line. My superior wants to speak to you personally. Well, uh, about time. Lead the way. Trastroviti, comrade. Good job, initiate. This should keep night huh. occupied for a I while. Know that model. Thank you. I'll take it from here. This is Blind Taylor. Come in, center. Hello, I repeat. This is Blind Taylor. Come in, center. Interference. Hello, Blind Taylor calling for center. Are you there, center? Over. Antiquated piece of trash. Come on. Center, do you read me, center? <sighs> Useless. I'm getting nothing but static. Must be that thunderstorm approaching. Come get me when the signal is back. Uh, thanks. Don't Get too close, thank you, but I'm not interested. Target down. You did it. Now head towards an exit. Yeah, I snuck on Eek, so shoot me. They might just do that. Those are military secrets. Uh, bunch of projector slides, travel route or something. Pretty dull, really. Well, there's a soldier coming by to fetch him, so stay clear, okay? Friendly advice. All right, I hear you. The slides depicting Knight's escape route from Cuba to his new home in the Soviet Union are ready for pickup at the reception. Desk security expect a soldier to fetch the slides, whereupon the KGB officer and Knight will likely retreat to the upstairs office. Carry on. Good thinking, Initiate. This should keep Knight's attention for a while. I mean, think about it. Ah, the slides arrived. About time. Maybe this will shut him up. KGB's top spy minister. As you said, best kind of spy. Are you some kind of soldier? Night in the office. Escape slides are here. Good grief. You people don't piss about, do you? It's not the Concord, but it'll do the trick. And my Sharon? Special extraction. We launch her into space, then parachute her down from the stratosphere with a lifeboat and a pair of snowshoes. Little luck, she'll reach Murmansk in a couple of months. Unless she runs into bears. Wh what? <laughs> we'll put her on a plane. Jesus, Knight. You're supposed to be smart. Anyway. That is if Janice agrees to your terms. And that's a big if. He... he will see things my way. Now, give me a moment. I need to learn this plan by heart. Fighter jet. Just had to be a fighter jet. Mid-air refuel. Good grief, is that even possible? Oh, easy. You have faced world champions from three different continents. You can do this. What did I tell you? Go fetch us a bottle of vodka. How hard can it be?
that guy who flew in from Moscow? Who? Oh. He's the real McCoy. That KGB officer? Netsky? Yeah. At ease, soldier. Ah, the fabled vodka. Well done, you. Hopefully. Yes. Just the move I was contemplating. I appreciate the gesture, friend. But one genius is more than enough. Why on earth didn't I think of that? Drink to calm the nerves, Knight. I'm really more of a bourbon man, but whatever gets the job done. To fallen comrades. Not socialism. <laughs> Don't be daft, Knight. You people don't go around making toasts to capitalism, do you? Point taken. Nostrovia. <laughs> Close enough. I feel too cold. And now I feel too warm again. Oh. Uh... down. You did it. Now head towards an exit. What the hell? Good evening, 47. Your destination is the Paris Fashion Show by Sanguine, one of Europe's leading couture brands. Your targets are Sanguine owner Viktor Novikov, a former oligarch turned fashion mogul, and his partner Dahlia Margolis, a retired supermodel, an iconic power couple on the global fashion scene, and two of the most dangerous people in the world. Novikov and Margolis are in fact the ringleaders of Iago, an enigmatic spy ring that deals in the global elite's most valuable secrets. Unscrupulous and opportunistic, Iago has caused disastrous security leaks all over the globe. When Crimean separatists caused a deadly meltdown at the Odessa nuclear power plant, Iago gave them access to the plant's security network. And when the Delgado drug cartel shot down the plane of President Hernandez and his family, Iago provided the classified flight plans. Now Novikov and Mogolis have obtained a knock list of British undercover agents, which they plan to sell at a secret Iago auction during the Sanguine show. So our client, MI6, need us to stop the ringleaders before the knock list ends up in the wrong hands. The Sanguine show will be swarming with security, and Viktor Novikov will be the focus of everyone's attention. But despite his posturing, he is merely the money man. The real target is Dahlia Margolis. Beautiful and brilliant, she is a master manipulator and the true brains behind Iago. Two targets, a highly public event. At first glance, an impossible task. Then again, I do know how you love a challenge. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Paris 47. The show is just about to start. This is the red carpet event of the season and the guest list is a veritable who's who of the global fashion elite. You will find Viktor Novikov basking in the spotlight, while Dahlia Margolis hosts the heavily guarded auction on the second floor for a group of Iago's top customers. 
Now, event security will keep a watchful eye on any suspicious activity, but I trust your timeless look shall fit right in. Good luck, 47. I'm standing outside Play de Valevska, hosting the Sanguine Fall Fest. Cut! Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Real considerate. You mind staying out of my shot? Jeez, you believe that guy? I hate these snobs. <sighs> Whatever. Let's just take it from the top. Right, right. Okay. Ready? And go. Cecile, I'm standing outside Play de Valevska. What the hell is wrong with you? Go away! Come on, come on. Don't encourage this asshole. Lindsay, let's just, let's just go for a break. Hey. Welcome, sir. Enjoy the show. Look, look, there he is. That's Novikov, the owner of Saint Green, right there. Make sure to join Dahlia and I for a drink later. There's someone we would like you to meet. Now, uh, hold on. He's what? If you'll excuse me, Congressman, urgent matter. Do enjoy your evening. Goddamn artists. What the hell is he up to now? How much you love the spotlight. Look, don't be an asshole, Sebastian. Whether you like it or not, you are the star of this show, and you will act the part. Oh, no, no, I am not going up there. This line is a travesty. You made me into a sellout, Victor. I can't face these people, and you? You can't make me. How about that, huh? The hell I can't. One simple phone call, remember. Uh-uh. Because you need me, my name on the bill. I'm no good to you, discredited. <sighs> nice try, Sebastian. Very clever. But I don't do compromises. Now get on that stage, or so help me God, I will ruin you. Man, I wish I had that jaw. <laughs> Stop, you look fine. I know I look fine, but he's like a, like a Greek god or something, you know? I can't believe he's actually here, you know? Like in the same room as us. Helmut Kruger's been my role model since college. According to our intel, Helmut Kruger is friendly with Dahlia Margolis. I suspect that Iago uses fashion models to infiltrate the lives of the rich and powerful, and Kruger is likely one of their spies. His face paint conveniently obscures his features, and the two of you already share a striking resemblance. Well, so, if he kisses your hand, will you ever wash it again? Yeah, yeah, I saw you blush earlier when you put on his makeup. Oh, what can I say? I'm human. Oh, wow, speaking of, that guy looks a lot like Helmut Kruger. Huh, yeah, uncanny. Sebastian. No, no, 
no, this, uh, this piece is supposed to satirize American exceptionalism. Sorry, sir, really can't let you through here. Oh, yeah. Got strict orders. How are things on your end? Good. Mr. Decker is on his way from the airport now with the case file. Last to remaining copy. Hmm. Yes, we're meeting shortly. It's time to bury the past once and for all. Nailed it. I, yeah, I understand. I know it is a lot of money. Look, we can argue about this later. I've got a show to run. Oh yeah, that's working. Okay, don't stop. We'll do whatever you're doing. Don't stop. Don't stop. This is gold, Tomboo. Oh, hell no. Oh, you're making me blush. Okay, hey, give me that uh, pose you did in the Jordan Cross video. You know, the black and white one with the ultra slow motion thing. Oh. Dahlia? Helmut? Uh, not yet. I, I go on in a few cycles, I think. I have. I think I'm in, but I want to be clear on a few details. Fine. I'll, I'll be up after the show. Y yes, ciao. <sighs> Hope you know what you're doing, Helmut. Yeah, Dan, it's me. Oh, uh, you're watching the live feed. No, not anytime soon. Hey, Actually, what's up, makeup I'm, boy? I'm doing this thing for Dahlia <laughs> Don't This way, if I do this, I can leave the game with some startup cash. A, a lot of startup cash, actually. And I can go into business on my own. Well, I'm, I'm thinking facial products. Uh, maybe underwear? Anyway, I gotta go, Dan. I'll see you in Cali, okay? All right. Yeah, ciao. Dahlia, Helmut here. Remind me again, where were you supposed to meet? Second floor, Voltaire Suite, next to the auction. Got it. You want me to drop by now, or...? No, no, it's essential that you walk the runway. Do the job, then come see me right away.
the diorama. I made it. Okay, champagne. Need that buzz. Mr. Kruger, need a touch-up, I see. No problem, just sit back and relax. Won't take a second. Appreciate it. Kruger? Good evening, sir. Please come right through. If you need anything, please don't. Mr. Jordan, do I have an opening bid? Thank you. Hello, Mr. Helmut. Uh, Mr. Kruger, let me know if you need new bodyguards. Okay. Access to the auction and a private audience with Dahlia Margolis. Helmut. Nicely Helmut. done, 47. Please, have a seat. So, Helmut, you accept my offer? I'm in. What's the job? Straight to the point. I like it. As it happens, I have the perfect assignment for you. Jessica Highmore. Highmore Consulting. The very same. That's why I wanted you in the show, so Jessica would notice you. Now, I want you to go to New York, seek out Jessica, and do what you do best. The girl is bright, young, beautiful, and should be right up your alley. And yet she's not the mark. My, you do catch on fast. No, that would be her father, CEO John Highmore. Jessica is your way in. Befriend him, get his trust. Highmore Consulting is planning a merger. I want to know with whom and at what price. All right. Consider it done. And that's for you. Keep it on you at all times. Mm, last resort. Cyanide. Good choice. <sighs> We've got trouble. Yes? Well, it's a little late now, isn't it? No, no, I'm gonna deal with this immediately. Selena's a big girl. She knew what she was getting into. Put a detail on her, and if she shows signs of cracking, pull her out. Fine, we'll talk later. Sorry about that, Helmut. So, a toast to a fruitful collaboration. Here, here. Well 
done, 47. Victor Novikov is next. to Novikov. Man is a flair for the dramatic. Secret exchange at the pavilion, very cloak and dagger. Who's the contact again? Max Decker of the Russian FSB. I don't know. Some Cold War dinosaur. Well, must be pretty important for Novikov to take time out during the show. Novikov is meeting Max Decker, a senior agent in the Russian FSB. Small world. The FSB has been mounting a criminal case against Novikov, but Decker's boss, FSB Section Chief Nikolai Kamarov committed suicide only last night. Or perhaps not. Either way, this could be a chance to catch Novikov away from the spotlight. We should go check out the place. Assess security risks. It's pretty exposed for my taste. Let me know if I can be of help. Novikov, Decker here. I'm at the show. Well, we could hardly predict a pileup on the freeway, could we? So you have a spot in mind, or...? Okay, fine. We'll wait in the lounge. Is there a problem? Novikov is busy. He told us to stay put and enjoy ourselves. One of his security staff will come and fetch us. Tell you where we're going? Pavilion, Northwest Gardens. That it was away from the prying eyes. Mr. Decker, Mr. Novikov will see you now. I will escort you to the rendezvous point. Ah, great. Thank you. Lead the way. Escorting Max Decker. Mr. Novikov's orders. Been expecting you. Go ahead. Well, well. No Novikov. Why am I not surprised? Maybe he's fashionably late, sir. Droll, Carson. Mr. Novikov, I'm at the pavilion. We did wait. Then your guy took us to meet you here, so which is it? I don't know. A security guy. Wore a uniform. All right, fine. See you soon. Well done, 47. Novikov is about to meet with Decker, and you have a front row seat. He's coming. Hope our parking doesn't expire. So, uh, I, I gotta ask, Mr. Decker. Section Chief Komarov, was, uh, was that your handiwork? Look at these hands. I'm a bureaucrat, Carson. I don't go around staging perfect suicides. No, I dare say young Kamarov got a taste of Viktor Novikov. Ask me, he had it coming anyway. Nobody likes an overachiever. And the file. Must be pretty important for Novikov to cough up seven digits. It's in it. Every bit of dirty intel the FSB ever collected on him. Our friend Novikov wasn't always in fashion, Carson. But the public has a short memory span. Ah, uh, and now he's tying up loose ends. Securing his legacy and our retirement plans. Mr. Decker. How are things at the office? That's 91 all over again. Kamarov is found dead, gun in hand, office locked from the inside. In his safe, evidence that he was leaking state secrets to Langley. An FSB section chief, Kremlin's golden boy, a CIA spy. <laughs> Look, I don't know who you hired to pull this off, but I want his number. Trust me, you don't. The case file, please. Right, right. Of course, last and only copy. There was an unfortunate server room fire at HQ. Misery loves company. Oh, Mr. Decker. <laughs> You know, I do believe this is going to be the start of a beautiful friendship. The money's being wired to your account. 
Do I need to call my guy in Switzerland? <laughs> Why? Haven't you heard? I am an honest businessman. Do svidania, Mr. Decker. Ah, <sighs> well, that's that. Take a stroll, would you, Kurt? I'd like to savor the moment. You sure that's wise, sir? I'll be fine. Finally, a clean slate. Didn't come cheap, but it was damn well worth it. Victor, old boy, you're walking on water. Whoa! Oh. Both targets are down. Great work. Now head towards an exit. How was Moscow? Kamarov is gone. I set him up as a Langley spy. It's quite the scandal at the FSB. His death will not be investigated. Your turn. Very well. The secrets of the global elite. Five years of work. Everything we've collected. This thing makes WikiLeaks look like a gossip rag. The pen beats the sword, huh? I have found that whoever wields the sword decides who holds the pen. Smile, Victor. Your reputation is safe. Now run along. I'm sure you have pretty dresses to attend to. Victor, good luck with the show. I have a feeling it's going to be the one you'll be remembered for. Uh, what the hell is a bare-knuckle boxer? A what? The sanguine boss, Novikov. He asked if I could make him one. Oh, that. Yeah, shit, I forgot. It's a cocktail, his favorite, apparently. The palace owner, Mr. Laren, left us the recipe, but I think I left it down in the basement. I was gonna copy it out and laminate it, but, you know. Eh, whatever, who cares? Booze is booze, right? Nah, I should really go look for it. Man pays our wages. Deserves a decent drink. According to staff, Viktor Novikov's favorite drink is a rather obscure cocktail known as a bare knuckle boxer. The recipe, however, has been misplaced in the basement. Sounds like a chance opportunity to get on Novikov's good side.
Nice work, 47. Time to mix up a storm. You. You look like you know what you're doing. Make me a bare knuckle boxer. Coming right up, Mr. Novakov. <sighs> Finally, a professional. Glad I hired one. Work 47. Time to find Dahlia Margolis. Hello, sir. Have a lovely day. Look, I know you had to set it up fast, but you can't just toss equipment around like it's... Yeah, well, it's Miss Margolis' private laptop. The whole auction is running from that thing. What if something had happened to it? You don't have to be sarcastic about it. You know what would have happened, right? She would have shot the messenger. That means me. Fine. Just... just don't do it again. Oh, stupid jerk. The Argo auction employs an interactive bidding system controlled from Margolis laptop. If you can get to it, you should be able to shut down the auction temporarily. This could be an opportunity to catch Margolis away from the spotlight. Margolis? What's her story? Uh, you know, actually, I read this, um, this book about the fashion industry in the ages. Margolis should be here shortly to fix the problem. Good thinking, 47. Wait, wait, what? Server offline? Oh, shit! No, 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 that's not good. Okay, okay, use your stupid head. Uh, what did that IT guy say? Uh, something about uh, uh, tools? No, 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 plugins? Oh, God! 
God, why didn't I listen? Dahlia is going to kill me. She is literally gonna kill, huh? I can't do this. No, I have to get out of here. Haley. Oh, Jared. Um, I, um, I, I thought you left. Haley, you need to get out of here now. Come with me. Let's go. J Jared, uh, you're scaring me. What's happening? I know, okay? About St. Clair's mole. And if I can figure it out, they will too. Don't even deny it. There's no time to waste. I'll get you out of here, but we gotta leave now. I... Okay, um... Uh, just, just let me get my... Uh... Just leave it. Let's go. Haley, you hat stand. What's your excuse this time? Haley, what? <sighs> Gone, of course. Haley, you doe eyed rube. How hard can it be to keep the goddamn server going? Oh, well done, 47. Victor Novikov is next. Late, but look, if you could just look, look, I only need a lens for my camera. It's an emergency. Palady Walewska. It's downtown at, yes, the Sanguine Fashion Show. I'm about to do an interview with Victor Novikov, and, and my intern must have just dropped the equipment bag because. According to the young fashion blogger, Novikov has agreed to do a live interview. This could be a good time to catch the Sanguine CEO off guard. The location, however, is currently unknown, and in any case, the blogger needs a replacement lens for her camera. May I suggest you help a girl in need? No, look, I'll meet your guy out front. I literally, look, I literally run alongside the van and throw money in the window, right? He won't even have... No, please, look, this is like make or break for me. I'll totally make it up to you. I'll advertise you shamelessly. No. No, it's a web zine. All the rage, you know, about fashion, lifestyle, and... Oh, come on, please. I'll be forever grateful. You'll have helped a fellow human break free from the shackles of obscurity. It's not every day you get to say that. <sighs> Fine. Thanks for listening. Excuse me, miss. I couldn't help but overhear. Is this what you're looking for? Oh, God, yes! Yes, thank you so much. Oh, what do I owe you? Just glad I could help. Thanks, mister. You're a lifesaver.
Hi, I was here earlier. Lana, Caprice. I'm here to interview Victor Novikov. I'll let him know you're ready, miss. Tell Mr. Novikov the interview is a go. No, the other one. The nobody. Say the word, I'm ready. Well done, 47. Novikov should be right here, like a moth to the spotlight. Mr. Novikov, thanks so much for taking time out to speak to me. You have no idea what this means. Well, fashion journalism needs new blood, miss. New voices to rival old battle horses like St. Clair. Oh, I totally agree. She's vicious. Now, everything's set, Mr. Novikov. Well, just check my phone to see if the live stream is working. Won't take more than a sec, OK? Time to find Dahlia Margolis. That's a fireworks remote. I wouldn't touch it if I were you. Look, Novikov's expecting a heads up before we trigger the display, so we can watch it from the garden. Hey, uh, buddy, uh, I'm gonna leave that alone. Novikov asked me to fetch it for him. He wants to trigger the fireworks himself. Everything okay? All right, whatever he wants, it's his money. Be sure to check and frisk anyone who has not been invited or works up here, okay? Wow, there's some moron downstairs. We run a tight out. Huh. Man, thought I heard something. Checking it out. Over. Yeah, like that.
me. I think I got a dead body here. There goes 100k. Just like that. Yeah, oh, I couldn't be happier with the way this is gone. Bravo! Oh, those smug displays. This had better be important. I... What? What are you, what are you telling me? S Say that again. Nonsense. Dahlia doesn't this have day, accidents. It's day. not her style. I, I will be up as soon as I can. Get the clients out. Discreetly, but don't call the police. They need to control what they see. Now say it back to me. Repeat it back to me. Very good. You did well to call me. What a waste. What a goddamn waste. Strange. Both targets are down. Great work. Now head towards an exit. According to the room plan, the infamous Sheikh Salman al-Ghazali resides in Suite 2. The al-Ghazalis are known terrorist supporters, and Salman is surely one of Iago's most prominent clients. He will no doubt have unlimited access to the auction. Better yet, he is also a notoriously private person. And apart from his family, employees, and close friends, few have seen his face up close. Shit. Still no answer. Oh my god, yeah. They, they know. They, they know, okay? They know what we're up to. They caught me and you're not. You still need solid proof that Victor and Marco are in it together. And if you've been caught, Liza, I need you to get up to that auction and finish the job. Me? No, no I, not I can't. good, not good, not Please. good. You can't ask me to do that. I can, Liza, and you will. We've got Why two you little... jobs on the line. If you're not coming, <gasps> look for them. Oh, God damn it. Add it, girl. This will get you inside. You tell the story in your trunk. You represent the family. A way to discredit key members of the National Cancer Corps. Get some evidence and get the hell out. So bad. What do you think? Should we do it? <laughs> Let the pros do their job, okay?
We have been expecting them. We are professionals. Everything is under control. Our job is to protect the people here, not downstairs. Fitting has begun. Any more bids? <laughs> Your Excellency Sheikh Al Ghazali. Miss Margolis invites you to join her in her office. Last bid. Well, they say that money makes people go blind. If that is true, you pick the perfect disguise. Yes. Hope you're enjoying Paris, Sheikh, Sheikh Al Ghazali. Salman Al Ghazali, heir to one of the largest fortunes in Arabia. And yet you bother to dabble in politics. Very commendable. You had something to show me? Oh, I do indeed. My organization has serendipitously acquired a list of names. British MI6 agents working in your very backyard. A knock list? Now, I normally don't like to play favorites, but I do like to see my merchandise put to good use. And I think I know a perfect match when I see one. So how about it? Interested? I'm interested. Excellent. It's off the table then. We shall settle the details tomorrow. A pleasure doing business with you, Your Excellency. Done, Victor Novikov is next. That... Oh shit! What happened? Pity. Hey, somebody call an ambulance! Somebody help me! Please, somebody help! Thank you, sir. Yes, madam. Flimsiest shit I've ever seen. Well, these bozos realize what happens if it drops. Everybody on stage will be crushed. Uh uh, never gonna happen. Oh, yeah? Murphy's Law ring a bell? The light rig could potentially crush anyone on stage below. I suggest you locate the stage schedule. If Novikov is head designer Sebastian Seder's replacement, we can probably tweak the odds in our favor. A fragile genius known to suffer from wild mood swings. Sato shouldn't be hard to get rid of. Be gentle, though. He is an artist, after all. Yeah, yeah. If anything that could go wrong actually went wrong, the freaking universe wouldn't even be here.
Attention, attention. Fine show, everybody. Everything in now, order, Your Highness. Since Sebastian, gentleman that he is, has chosen to let us all down, I will be taking the stage in his place. That is all. Dismissed. The ladies are exiting the runway. Novikov takes the stage, he will be right where we want him. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Wasn't that something? Sebastian Sato, everybody. Now, I know what you're thinking. Get off stage, Victor Novikov. <laughs> yes. Yes, quite right, quite right. This is Sebastian's big moment, and he should be the one up here, basking in all of your love. Now, do you know what he said to me, friends? Victor, he said, I couldn't have done this. This, my finest collection, without you. You should take the stage this evening. Naturally, I refused, but Sebastian, he was adamant. I mean it, Victor, he told me. A fashion line is not just the effort of a single brilliant artistic mind. No. No. I used to think so, and I was wrong. I see now that we must stop this cult of personality, that the entrepreneur and the artist are equal. That business and art are like heart and soul. Therefore, Victor, my Dear, dear friend, the stage is yours. So, I proudly take the stage tonight, ladies and gentlemen, not in the name of Viktor Novikov or Sebastian Sato or Sangui. No. I dedicate this moment to the entire team who has made this line possible and to the spirit of creativity that brought us all together. Thank you. Thank you and enjoy the after party. All drinks are on me. Thank you. Good morning, forty seven. Your destination is the coastal town of Sapienza, also known as the Jewel of the Amalfi Coast. Your target is a former client of ours, Silvio Caruso, a brilliant but troubled bioengineer employed by the Ether Biotech Corporation. Renowned for his early stem cell research, Caruso is now reportedly working on a far more disturbing project, a DNA-specific virus able to infect anyone, anywhere in the world. Imagine a bullet, fired in any direction, passing through countless bodies without inflicting harm, invisible and undetectable until it strikes its target. A world of armchair assassins killing with impunity. This is what awaits us, unless Caruso is stopped. Our client, one of Ether's major private stockholders, wants the project cancelled on ethical grounds, but without destroying the company in the process. She has asked us to eliminate Silvio Caruso and destroy the yet unfinished virus prototype. You will also need to deal with Caruso's lab head, Francesca DeSantis, a high-level Ether employee and cutthroat corporate climber who holds intimate knowledge of Caruso's research and could potentially carry on in his place. This is no ordinary contract, 47. Caruso's virus is a serious threat to our craft and trade, not to mention our core ideals. So failure is not an option. I'll leave you to prepare. Welcome to Sapienza 47. 
Silvio Caruso's family home is right across the square. The bioengineer suffers from acute travel phobia, so the Ether Corporation has installed a state-of-the-art field laboratory somewhere below ground. Expect security levels to rise as you get closer to the virus. Good luck, 47. Dr. Lafayette speaking. Just so. I'm outside Villa Caruso now, enjoying a coffee in the sun. Lovely town. So, anything I should know about Dr. Caruso before our first session? I was briefed on his anxiety attacks, his genophobia. Hmm, very well. Don't you worry. Caruso is not the first troubled genius I have turned around. Just look at Jordan Cross. I'll have young Silvio calm and serene in no time. And you as well. It seems Ether Management is concerned about Silvio Caruso's mental health, no doubt due to his mental breakdown last year. They have hired world-renowned psychologist Dr. Oscar Lafayette to treat the neurotic bioengineer. The session will no doubt take place in private, and furthermore, our records show that Caruso and Lafayette have not previously met. Someday you might be a head waiter. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm in a lot of pain, actually. That's oh, that's inconvenient. Oh, boy. Uh, 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 are you okay? You want a glass of soda water or spritzer or something? You need help?
Dr. Oscar Lafayette, here to see Mr. Caruso. It's just standard procedure. We're all friends here. Thank They're expected. You. Have Go a good right one, in. sir. Dr. Lafayette? Oscar Lafayette. I have an appointment with Mr. Caruso. Ah, yes. Senor Caruso has been informed of your arrival. Please, follow me. I shall take you to his quarters. And may I say, it is well that you are here, Doctor. The Master has not been himself lately. I... well... I only hope you are as good as they say. Don't worry. I am. Doctor, good to see you. That is Francesca DeSantis. Doctor, good to see you. Senor Caruso's private quarters. I will be downstairs if needed. Best of luck. A private therapy session with Caruso. Nicely done, 47. The renowned Dr. Oscar Lafayette. Mr. Caruso, shall we begin? If you insist. So, Ether sends a specialist to rummage through my brain. They must think I'm losing it again. Relax. Start by telling me what's on your mind. Isn't it obvious? I'm under a lot of pressure. Work. Mother died last year. Stress manifests itself in the strangest ways, I am told. Your mother, Isabella, would you like to talk about her? Look, I... I know what you're driving at. My neuroses, my anxiety, my social phobias. Not the least my pathological fear of women. It's all... Deeply rooted. Go on. I had a girlfriend, you know. In high school. Pretty, too. Popular. And I was shy. Bookish. It shouldn't have worked. Not outside those stupid teen dramedies. But it did. For a short while, anyway. Then Mother decided that Emilio wasn't a good influence on me. So she paid the gardener's son to seduce her. He was 20, roguish, rode a motorcycle. Mother, she, she had pictures taken, showed them to me on prom night. Romantic love is fleeting, she said. Only a mother's love endures. What do you want me to say? I loved my mother. I hated my mother. Same as everybody else. Isabella bullied you, shamed and belittled you, made you feel like a failure, all to keep you 
Her last and loyal son from ever leaving, too. Stop it! I don't want to hear it. Your mother was a monster. Is that not why you killed her? What? How dare you? You couldn't breathe. She smothered you. So you smothered her. Is that how it happened? Yes! All right. I did it. I did it. Are you happy now? Is that supposed to be cathartic? Well, guess again, Doctor. Back to the drawing board. I think we have made some excellent progress. Same time tomorrow? Good day, Mr. Caruso. Next up, Francesca DeSantis. Hope we know how to put all this stuff together. I can't even get into the box. Well, they have Dr. Lafayette. Doctor. Francesca DeSantis is evidently having an affair with Caruso's golf coach, Roberto Vargas. A notorious ladies' man, Vargas has turned DeSantis's bedroom into a candlelit love nest and plans to call on her after his golf lesson with Caruso. Well, she should know better than to mix business with pleasure. Francesca. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm not the one who calls. I did say that, but, uh, hey, the guy can change. So, did you get my message? Music to my ears. We'll meet up in your room, okay? I'll call you as soon as Caruso lets me off the hook. He's unusually patient today. No, please. Surprise me. Ciao, Bella. Still got it.
It's me. Roberto? Silvio let you off early. I want us to meet. Your room. Mm. I should say no. But you won't. See you soon. Nicely done, 47. DeSantis will be here shortly. I suggest you get in the mood. Possible, Roberto. Look, don't talk. Just listen for a second. I like you, Roberto. You're a lot of fun, and I could even see this. I, I, under the right circumstances, we... The situation, it's complicated. You see, Ether, the company I work for, they didn't just send me here to assist Caruso. They sent me here to spy on him. They fear he is becoming a liability, a threat even. And from what I have seen so far, I think they might be right. This could be dangerous, and I thought you deserved to know. So, <laughs> well, now you know. Hmm. My bosses. They say you are a distraction, and they want me to break it off. So, why don't you give me a good reason not to? What is it? I'm in the middle of some... The data stream. Okay, I'll be right there. Hmm. Sorry, Roberto. To be continued, I'm sure. Two targets down. Now destroy the virus. This field lab. You made it. The virus prototype will be close by. Look for some type of quarantine unit.
Okay, so walk me through this. Right. Well, this is the control panel for the air purification system. We're at a critical stage of development, and we keep the central lab perpetually doused in chemicals. In case of an outbreak? Yes. We use a unique compound that breaks down the protein coating, which protects the virus, effectively killing it by damaging its DNA and RNA, so it neither infects cells nor replicates within the cells. <laughs> Belts and suspenders, huh? You better believe it. In its natural state, the prototype could infect and kill everyone inside this lab in a matter of minutes. The most ferocious organism you've ever seen. <laughs> now all we have to do is tame it. Anyway, the air purification system clears the toxin, so you can enter without a hazmat suit. Just don't do it unless you're in a hurry. Thank you. Duly noted. In case of an accident, the central lab unit is kept perpetually doused in chemicals to stop the virus prototype from spreading. Entering without a hazmat suit is sure to be lethal. The air purification system is able to clear the toxin, but the controls are only operated by senior lab personnel. So this is where Ms. DeSantis keeps all the research data. Keeps this stuff pretty close to her chest. Why? We all signed an NDA the size of a phone. Yeah, well, there was an incident a while ago. A researcher made a copy of the hard drive and tried selling it to one of the people. They came from the side of the field. Luckily, but we'd all be out of the job. Just seriously, you don't touch anything during the middle of the test and you don't want to corrupt that data. Right. Time to kill the competition. Entering the Ether Lab requires a key card and a uniform. Luckily, it seems both are within reach. Warning, dangerous compound. Warning, dangerous compound. Processing. Oh, no, 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 this oh, isn't oh happening! God. I don't know what this 
Jessica, this has to be a mistake. Holy shit. Shit! Shit! shit. Oh. like we're prepared for toxic spills, sir. I just need to talk to you, sir. Hey, get ready now. The security is in the dark about the incident. A few at the company knew about the virus. Not even the board. Must have been someone at the lab. <sighs> I understand. I'll get to the bottom of this. <sighs> Boss is unhappy. I followed you from Italy. I guess when you're invisible, you stop looking over your shoulder. You did this. Iago exposed you. I see I did the heavy lifting. I just pulled some strings. Yeah, you mind. How do you expect... I play dirty. That's how you defeat a stronger opponent. You strike from behind. Now give me the key. You have a family? Trust me, if there's a weakness, Providence will find it. Take my chances. The key. Fine. Won't do you much good. It's funny. Cobb said the same thing. Thank you, messenger. Don't. I just killed you. And where are you from? You didn't tell me your cousin was back in town. Ah, do I detect a certain attraction to the dashing private detective from Milan? Oh, what of it? He's cute. Actually, uh, well, I really shouldn't tell you this, but he's here about a case. The client is Francesca DeSantis. You know, the, the female doctor that's staying at uh, Villa Caruso. Really? Wonder what she wants with a snoop. Well, you, you didn't hear it from me, okay? Where'd you see him, anyway? A couple of streets over, sleeping on a bench. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's Sal for you. Always was a Nighthawk. According to our research, Sal Falcone, a private investigator from Milan, has performed services for Silvio Caruso in the past. The question is, does Falcone still work for Caruso, or does DeSantis have an agenda of her own? Only one way to find out. Thank you. 
Orso sta parlando con il resto della squadra, Orso è arrivato in tempo. Hey buddy! Miss DeSantis, Sal Falcone. Sorry for the delay, I needed uh, to uh, tie up some few loose ends. Yeah, yeah, I just got into town. Down at the pier? Sure. Straight away? All right, no time like the present. Um, see you in a bit. Hmm, huh. sexy voice. Hello there. Nice day for hey, it, isn't it? What the hell do you think you're doing? That's my money. What's up? Good thinking, 47. DeSantis will arrive shortly. This is one time the dame won't fool the detective. Ah, Mr. Falcone. Looking slightly out of place. So, uh, what's this about? Oh, walk with me. This is all too public for my tastes. This is far enough. Mr. Falcone, what I am about to ask you might be highly unorthodox. Go on. About a month ago, Silvio Caruso hired you for an acquisition job. I need to know what exactly it was you acquired and why. I'm afraid I can't do that. P.I. Confidentiality. Uh, I, I am willing to pay you handsomely. You could retire, hire others to dig through garbage. Don't think so. I like to get my hands dirty. 
If you wanted to claim the moral high ground, you could have done so over the phone. Saved us both a trip. If you change your mind, you know where to find me. Target down. Next up, Silvio Caruso. According to the medical journal, Caruso suffered a breakdown last year. He claims to have found his mother's favorite record playing in the empty dining hall and seen her chairlift move by itself. Upon hearing the service bell ring in Isabella's old bedroom, Caruso entered alone and was later found unconscious by his staff. He claims to have no recollection of what he witnessed inside. Now that is interesting. Entering the ether lab requires a key card and a uniform. Luckily, it seems both are within reach. Mother's records. How is this possible? <laughs> Just like that night. Wonder if. if be some rational explanation. Tell me what, what, what... Didn't you hear? That was her sick bell. Just like last time. First, the record. Then, the stair lifting. And, and now, the sick bell. Like a trail of breadcrumbs. Like she is calling me to enter. Don't you understand? Uh, I... I'm going inside. Good show, 47. Now do put the poor soul out of his misery. Hello? Is anyone in here? Mother? Father, for I have sinned. It has been seven days since my last confession. 
Speak, child. Yesterday, I, um... Uh, I made a mistake. I made a mistake, and a man lost his life. <clears throat> a good man. Someone I knew. He was... It was just a tiny little slip up where I work, but even a small mistake can be catastrophic. They took him to the chapel morgue, and I want to pay my respects. Say how sorry I am. But he's dead, Father. And nothing I say will bring him back. An accident at the ether lab has claimed the life of a scientist. His body is currently stored at the town morgue, and a guilt-ridden colleague plans to visit there to pay her respects. Between them, these two have everything we need to infiltrate the field lab. If I go, am I merely being selfish? My child, grief is for the living, not the dead. You do whatever you need to do, because his sorrow has ended, and yours has not. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I will. Goodbye. All right, fine, lady. If something happens, it's on you. Room secure. Leave me, Bruno. Committed. Like we're on a crusade. We say this virus will end all war, but the truth is, we have no idea, and we don't care. We're just monkeys poking the unknown with a stick, and what of it? There is nothing as potent as an idea whose time has come. No, I don't have second thoughts. But still, being here, I wonder. Hey. If God is mad, give me a heads up, will you? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> goodbye, Malcolm. I'm, I'm really sorry. Entering the ether lab requires a key card and a uniform. Luckily, it seems both are within reach. This field lab, 
You made it. The virus prototype will be close by. Look for some type of quarantine unit. you to Chef Marcello personally. If he's unhappy with you, I'll get the blame. I could get fired. Is that what you want? Oh, please. Like, you want to wait on that weirdo Caruso for the rest of your life? Come on, you gotta think big, sis. This, man, all this here is just temporary. Oh, that weirdo is your boss, Rocco. So get your shit together and you're asked to work. Pronto. It's almost lunchtime. Chef Marcello Ray has hired a new kitchen hand by recommendation, and the two have yet to meet. Could be a convenient way to infiltrate the mansion. FYI, according to our research, Chef Marcello has been trying to replicate Isabella Caruso's famous home cooking, but Silvio Caruso is not impressed. I suggest you give him a helping hand. Okay. Ah, just don't get it. I'll be right there. Oh, I don't even know why I bother. Okay, better get back to work. Give me a break. Turning on. So these this tomato sauce. Maybe you can get it right. I seem to be jinxed. When you're done, ring the dinner bell. Sure thing, boss. I'll give it some love. Caruso will be coming to lunch shortly. His last meal, I presume. Are you done prepping?
Lunch is served. Pasta bolognese. The uh, Caruso style. This again. Well, this is something else. Well, you, the last gigs were the media tycoon who based in Mexico City. Places like that, you can oh, sense the danger. Terrible. This town Just awful. It's like a freaking white telephone film. My yeah, dear sweet mother would be turning I'm over in her grave if she knew how you butchered her family That's recipe. Really right. And on her death day anniversary. For shame, Mr. Ray. For shame. Hardly what I would call a eureka moment. Needs to get out, just you know, go with it. Get down. Next up, Francesca DeSantis. This is impossible. Just look for a combination code like Ms. DeSantis said. Caruso's absent-minded. Likes to write things down. Yeah, but he wouldn't just leave it lying around for the cleaning staff to find. Could be jewelry and stuff inside. Staff wouldn't even know about the safe. They never come up here. That being said, if I was the doc, keep the code downstairs in my office, bedroom. On his phone? Yeah, well, DeSantis says try, okay? So, just try. Huh. The Ether Corporation clearly doesn't trust Caruso and have ordered their proxy, DeSantis, to spy on him. Paranoid or not, the content of Caruso's safe is sure to be useful. I thought it was a good idea, too. All right, where haven't we looked? Ma'am, 
I found this in Mr. Caruso's safe. I thought you'd want to know. My God. Thank you. Truly. Well done, 47. This should keep DeSantis distracted for a while. I can't believe I actually admired you. Keep my hair in a bag, you bastard. Thanks for relieving me of my guilt when I have you killed. Two targets down. Now destroy the virus. box of VHS tapes in the observatory. I didn't know Caruso was so old school. Oh, those. They're all uh, old family clips from his childhood. You know, camcorder stuff. I don't know, he used to watch them all the time on his old projector. Oh, uh, well, my cousin does digital conversions in his basement. He, he'd probably give him a good price. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's not a good idea. Caruso put the tapes away after his mental breakdown. The doctors didn't think it was a good idea for him, you know. Seeing his mother's ghost and all. Oh, right. Well, if we could borrow the projector sometime, I have a bunch of old horror films on DVD. According to staff, Caruso has a nostalgic streak and keeps a crate of VHS tapes from his childhood somewhere in the observatory. Apparently, he used to watch them on the projector, but stopped after his mental breakdown. I suggest you locate those tapes. Could be just what we need. I've got... The haunting of Building Food Manor. Hey, nice. You are on, my friend. Entering the Ether Lab requires a key card and a uniform. Luckily, it seems both are within reach. Coming, 47. Now keep still. Caruso won't be long. I 
forgotten about that. There were candles burning when we made love. I see you lighting candles. Mother, I was happy that the past was not in hand so I did. When she had the twins, she was happy. I was red wine drink to his love. Get rid of him, or I swear I will. The dawn and the I'm begging you, come back to me. The dawn and It's now or never. I follow you, I'm watching you. The dawn and the I really should watch this. What if I relapse? Nonsense. I don't need to be treated with kid gloves. I can. Watch what I please. <laughs> Look at you, pathetic little turd. Wimp, coward, you spineless pushover, weakling. <laughs> Believe right. Enough for now. Back to reality. <laughs> Now destroy the virus. I put 47 spices in the pasta. It still tastes like ashes in my mouth. I hang my head and cry when I think of spaghetti bolognese that you made for me. Caruso, you know where it is. Big mansion up in Sapienza, richest family on the coast. Come on, Dante, just do this for me. Those flowers have to be delivered today, and Mr. Caruso is a loyal customer. If we lose his business, the boss will fire me for sure. Come on. Today is the anniversary of Isabella Caruso's death. Silvio Caruso will be visiting her grave and has ordered a fresh bouquet of flowers. His visit would be a good time to catch him alone. That is, provided the flowers ever arrive. Ugh. Fine, fine, forget it. I'll manage somehow. Wouldn't want to be a bother. Yeah, I know I gotta tell her about the accident. I'm just... I'm working on my story. Yeah, later. See you, okay? Damn sun was in my eyes. Well, get some shades, Dumbo. Christ, one more inch and... I know, I know. I'm really sorry. Uh, hey, are you all right, buddy? <sighs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm fine, okay? Uh, it's a close call, but... I guess... I, I guess I could have signaled more clearly. <sighs> to tell you the truth, this bike cost me an arm and a leg, and I'm more worried about it than me. If you know what I mean. Well, uh... You know, we could always blame an animal, you know, a bird in birth something, maybe. I, it, you know, it swooped right in and attacked you. I barely got out of your way. Force majeure kind of thing. You know, nobody's fault. <laughs> hmm, bird, huh? Yeah, yeah, well, look, we'll figure out something, buddy. You just wait here while my partner deals with our boss, okay? You can hitch a ride with the tow truck.
flower delivery for uh, Silvio Caruso. Just relax, you'll be on your way in a sec. Green light. Go ahead, sir. Been a month already, huh? Time is of the essence for you guys. Chop, chop, son. Flowers for Mr. Caruso? Ah, excellent. You can leave them on Mrs. Caruso's grave in the garden. Come along, I'll show you the way. <sighs> Such a devoted son. So, down the stairs, near the cliff. You can't miss it. I will inform Senor Caruso. He will be pleased, no doubt. Good work, 47. This should keep Caruso distracted for a while. Mr. Delivery Man, move on. I could take you in. Now move away. Have a moment. You breathing down my neck. No, don't argue. Just get out. If Ether wants to complain, they can send me a memo. Go. Oh. I am close now, Mother. I will make my mark on this world. You always said I thought too highly of myself. You were wrong. I know what you went through alone in this mansion. Husband, dead, abandoned by your favorite sons, single mother to an unlovable child. You were smart. You had shown such promise. Could have become anything. But you settled for a life of convenience. And when you finally realized your mistake, it was all too late. Well, guess what, Mother? Worse fates than yours have befallen members of the human species. Others have managed to bear the burden more gracefully. You made me feel I was worthless. I will never forgive you. 
part of me wishes you were here, Mother. So I could smother you all over again. Francesca DeSantis. Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is Marrakesh, Morocco, where civil riots are looming. Your targets are private banker Klaus Strandberg and army general Reza Zidane, two of the conspirators in a sinister plot to overthrow Morocco's fragile government. Strandberg, a former bank CEO who stole billions of dollars worth of savings from the Moroccan people, was facing trial for investment fraud. But early this morning, a band of heavily armed mercenaries freed Strandberg from his prison transport, resulting in the death of several police officers. Strandberg now takes refuge at his native Swedish consulate, in front of which crowds of angry protesters have gathered, demanding his handover to Moroccan authorities. We believe General Zaydan orchestrated Strandberg's escape to infuriate the public and spark nationwide riots, allowing Zaydan to impose martial law. Operating out of a field HQ at a nearby abandoned school, he will no doubt use the riots to depict the Rabat government as weak and inept, and persuade the general staff to support a fully-fledged military coup in the name of national security. Our client, building contractor Hamilton Lowe, who stands to lose a fortune in government contracts, has hired us to prevent the coup d'etat. To do so, you need to paralyze Zidane's rebel forces and prevent the riots from escalating further, hence the double contract. This is quite the political powder cake, 47, so be careful. The fate of a nation is at stake. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Marrakesh, 47. The situation grows more tense by the minute. The consulate is under lockdown, but the protests are only a stone throw away from full-blown riots, and Zaydan won't hesitate to unleash his troops. So whatever you're planning, time is of the essence. Good luck, 47. Capitalism. I mean, that's what we all want this day and age, right? Well, then what should we do? If Crystal don't get involved, should we take action? It's matters of national security, but I, I listen here, to... pal. I'm sorry, but you're not coming through. you have to salute to get this post? Come on! I How you doing? General Zayden keeps 
just coming down here to check on the prisoner. I hear they were close, so what'd he do, poor bastard? The way I heard it, his brother was one of the policemen who got killed when the mercs attacked Strandberg's prison transport this morning. So he, uh, got cold feet. Tried to blow the lid on the whole operation. Uh, not smart. But, uh, pretty human. I'm just glad I wasn't picked for the firing squad. I hear you. According to the soldiers, the condemned prisoner in the cell was a close friend of Zaydan. However, when his brother, a Marrakesh police officer, was killed during Strandberg's breakout, the prisoner decided to betray Zaydan and go public. Alas, he was caught before he could thwart the coup d'etat. You're in. Good work, 47. Now to locate General Zaydan. Uh, never you mind. General Zaydan says the man's a traitor. Probably got cold feet about the operation. Tried to rat us out. Still on guard duty, huh? Yep. Hey, mind if I take a swing at the lousy rat? Eh, no can do. Only officers are allowed in. Zaydan's orders. Don't know. Maybe he thinks treachery is contagious. I'd never believe I was a Maybe. traitor. If he... Well, no salute. Are you here to gloat, Reza? Thought you had a government to overthrow. You should always embrace the small pleasures. You sold us outside. And I would do it again. Proudly. You're a monster, Reza. I am sorry about your brother. He wasn't supposed to have been at the prison transport. But you know what they say about omelets. And he died for a cause. To line the pockets of your mysterious backers. I didn't say it was a good cause. Right, right. Well, this was lovely. Now please leave. That's it? No threats? No, I'll kill you if it's the last thing I do? <laughs> Reza. Oh, I will kill you. If it's the last thing I do. You're dismissed. General Satan's orders. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Dan won't expect resistance from a tied up prisoner. <sighs> Time to decide. What should I do? Well, don't tell me you're sleeping, Side. Plenty of time for that, I'm sure. Oh. 
So what'll it be, old friend? Firing squad? Poison? Hanging? Oh, so many choices. Target down. Move on to Klaus Strandberg. Just about strangle Jerry. Stomach cramps. What kind of idiot eats shellfish from a buffet in this heat? Relax, Pam. I hired a local cameraman. He's a freelance guy. He'll be fine. Oh, well, if you're not worried, Tyler, then I'm not worried. After all, it's not like this is a very important interview. I mean, it's certainly not like it's an exclusive or anything. Pam, you remember that talk we had about low blood sugar? Mm hmm Yeah, this is one of those times. Oh, so where is this guy anyway? He'll be here. And you, have a banana, for Christ's sake. Klaus Strandberg has agreed to an exclusive interview with celebrity GNN reporter Pam Kingsley, no doubt to enrage the public even further. This could be a way inside the lockdown consulate, and the replacement cameraman, a local freelancer, is yet to arrive. God, will you look at this shit? Come on, this is ridiculous. But who did this? God damn it. Whoa, occupied, okay? You mind? Find another spot, buddy. This is taken, okay? Hey, lock's not working, but it's occupado. Capiche? 
Whoa, occupied, okay? You mind? Find another spot, buddy. This is taken, okay? Hey, get huh? you gotta die! Your guy's clearly late. Maybe he just took the money and made a dash for it, huh? Ah, uh, he'll be here. I just got stuck in traffic or something. Or Ugh, finally, where have you been? Sorry, I'm late. Streets aren't safe. about the location of the seven billion. Stick to the facts. I got it. The accusations, the trial, uh, Stromberg's dramatic breakout. You know, get his side of the story. Title, I got this. Right. Hey, step off, you know? I got pepper spray and I know how to use it. You made it. Most impressive, 47. Now today. to locate Klaus Strandberg. Oh, Pam Kingsley, GNN News. Oh, so many My name's cameras Pearson. here today. Mr. Strandberg is ready for you. Follow me, please. I must say I was surprised that Consul Olander authorized this interview. Adding fuel to the fire, I should think but that is not my call. Nevertheless, you must understand that the building is on high alert. If the situation evolves, you will be evacuated without protest, yes? Well, let's just hope it doesn't come to that, Ms. Pearson. Take my picture. Shots? Aha! Capital, you made it! Come on in. Come in, good. Pam Kingsley, a pleasure. Hmm? I watch your show all the time. You're even more lovely in the flesh. <laughs> and this is... Uh, Tyler Clark, producer. And this is our cameraman, Finley. Tyler and Finley. Splendid. 
Well, <clears throat> let's do this, shall we? Where do you want me? Uh, the light is nice over here. Not that I want to tell you boys how to do your jobs, good heavens. Well, right here is fine, Mr. Stramberg. Sit down, make yourself comfortable, and we'll be ready in no time. Oh, no, no, please, please. Call me Klaus. Okay, I think we're set. Roll when you're yeah, ready. rolling. Hey, when you got a sec, think you could do something about the lights upstairs somewhere? We need Thanks, all buddy. the cameras we can get today, sir. Okay, we're ready if you are, Mr. Stanford. Access to the consulate and first row seats for the interview. Nicely done, 47. Nice camera, good quality. all about it later but anyways I'll get there as soon as I can I love you bye
compromise. But I... I don't understand. There is no sign of forced entry, no alarms, nothing. One of my people has gone missing in Johannesburg. A key bearer. I wish I'd been informed. Still, the system demands two keys, and the rest are all accounted for. Except for your late predecessors. Cobb? But... His plane went down over the Pacific. It was an accident. Such was the conclusion at the time. Yes. Die, Mr. Fannin. Happens all the time, even to us. It seems like a conspiracy. Probably isn't. And yet, the failed coup in Morocco, the ether virus. Someone knows about us. There was a pattern, and I failed to see it. Providence is under attack. How much was there? Money. <laughs> Not money, Mr. Fennin. Information on all of our assets and operatives, like you. Take a trench, Director, and make it a deep one, because none of you are safe anymore. Doing well. Thanks for asking. He's upstairs right now working on this novel of his, some kind of political thriller, I think. You know, airport lit. Oh, that's nice. So he doesn't miss the old school? Well, he was headmaster for 30 years, and he still carries around the master key. You know, the one that fits all the locks? He doesn't seem to be able to park with the damn thing, but that's nostalgia for you. Well, maybe now he'll be a famous writer instead. Right. And maybe my carpets are magical. The old headmaster of the school Zaydan is using as his field HQ lives right above the carpet shop. According to his son, he kept the school's master key out of nostalgia. Supposedly, this opens any lock in the building. Oh, give your old man some credit, Marwan. Mega Charter series. Book one. Title Diplomacy's Edge. Say what? Is anybody there? Ah. Salute, soldier. General Zayden keeps coming down here to check on the prisoner. I hear they were close, so what do you do? May I heard it? His brother was one of the police who was killed and was in fact a member of the prison transport this morning. He got cold feet. Try to blow the lid on the whole operation. There. So much for breaking and entering. You're in. Good work, 47. Now to locate General Zaydan. Thing is, it's not like Zayden is even the lead from the front kind of guy, you know? I mean, uh, he graduated from West Point. La di da da. Flying colors and all. But has he seen actual combat? Not unless you count enhanced interrogation. Blow hard with a pair of pliers. That's all he really is. Oh, <laughs> you're preaching to the choir, man. No, but really. I mean, this whole man's man attitude. Deep, booming voice. Chest hair, right? Come on. Everyone knows Zayn is just an upper-class fop. His dad was Secretary of State. 
estate. This family's practically royalty. The only way this guy was not gonna become... Please don't... Oh! Target down. Move on to Klaus Strandberg. Got an accident here. No signs of foul play. Just straight up shitty luck. Out. In case of an emergency, Strandberg and Zaydan will meet face to face at the center of the underground tunnel. The conspirators can summon each other over the phone using a set of keywords, one of which is locked away in Razor Zaydan's safe. is on the move, and we know exactly where he's going. Good day to you, Sergeant. You made it. Most impressive, 47. Now to locate Klaus Strandberg. Both targets down. Now head towards an exit. I'm sorry to dump this turd on you, but I've been waiting six months for this transfer, and I'm not about to don my cape just because Orlando made an asshole decision. When the security alarm sounds, Strandberg has been instructed to rendezvous with a team of Zaydan's soldiers at the underground garage. Apparently, a secret tunnel runs between the consulate and a shoe shop downtown. This is how the banker plans to escape the building unnoticed. I suggest you locate that shop, 47. This could be a way inside the consulate, not to mention a chance to lure Strandberg into the open. 
What is he thinking, keeping Strandberg under his protection? Anyway, in case of a security breach, all VIPs rendezvous at the underground garage and take emergency tunnel B to a shop downtown where they'll remain until escort arrives. Any questions? Good. Thank you, Lasse. And stay safe out there, okay? <laughs> Who'd you have to salute to get this post? Not bad, huh? I figure since no one knows about the escape tunnel, this is the easiest gig in town. I mean, all we gotta do is... Oh, shit! What? Shit! I forgot to leave the all-access keycard in the parking garage. Whoa. Are you kidding? Uh, I need to get back there before XO tears me a new one. All, all right, I'll hold down the fort. Take the tunnel, it's way faster. Yeah, yeah. Cankers. Bankers are cankers. <laughs> Gotta admit, uh, that's pretty catchy. Whew. Pretty elaborate. Huh. Wonder what came before the consulate building. Royal Palace, probably. What? What? What, what was that? Huh. Uh, probably just the pipes. Jeez. Creepy down here. Perfect for one of those dreams where you just run and run and get nowhere. How you boys holding up down there? Well, all we gotta do is pick up Strandberg at the garage and escort him back to HQ. The non-combatants don't know about this tunnel, so it should be a cakewalk. Almost a shame, really. Wouldn't mind seeing Strandberg get a taste of mob justice. Ah, take it you met him. Was there when the assault team brought him in. It's weird. Part of you wants to punch him in the face, part of you wants to give him all your money. It's a gift, I suppose. Tell me about it. Anyway, gotta get back to the garage. Later. Whoa. What is that? You, go take a look. Affirmativo. Beautiful. You made it. Most impressive, 47. Now to locate Klaus Strandberg. out of here. Move! Yeah, yeah. We need to move the package now. Got it. Anything from anybody else. Over. Time to man up. We got trouble. Anyone copy? Still looking. No sign of any perp. Man, I got nothing to report from my current location. Over. My weapon's hot. Anyone copy? Still looking. No sign of any perp.
Okay, we're in the safe zone. No one gets inside the perimeter. Are we clear? Affirmative. Better lock and load! You heard anything from anybody else? Over. We're good. You're safe now. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I let Zeta know what a good job you did. Good show, Sergeant. The school's just across the alley. Go on. We got your backs. Oh, finally! Yes. This is Team One leader. We're at the safe house. Proceeding toward the rendezvous point. Over. Okay, let's go. Good show, 47. Strandberg is on the move, and we know exactly where he is heading. How did you get in the... Wait. Wait, is that... Um, I... I don't know who that is. I don't know. Well, if it isn't the most... Uh, man in can Morocco. I help you? You're kind of inside my personal space bubble. This is great. Private. The package is secure. Over. Good. Ten Hut, General Fay. Well, well. If it isn't the most hated man in Morocco. Yes, well, I couldn't have done it without you, Zaytan. Tell me, which slogan is your favorite? I like bankers or wankers. Yes, well, just put me on a plane. I did what was asked of me, and now I'll take my money and run if it's all the same to you. Why'd you do it, Klaus? We serve the same master, and we're very well provided for. For the love of God, man, why risk it all? Oh. You don't get it. It's not about the money. It's about the game. <laughs> hmm. Well, speaking of, I have a government to topple. Yes, and be quick about it. Both targets down. Now head towards an exit. You made it. Most impressive, 47. Now to locate Klaus Strandberg. According to the appointment schedule, Klaus Strandberg has booked a massage to relieve his back pains. No doubt all that time in prison has caused muscle stiffness. The masseur, who works at a local clinic, has apparently already checked into the building.
Massage expert, Connie Angst. It is not fair. It is. It isn't. You can't keep me in here under these circumstances. If I had known... Well, that's easy for you to say. You're not the one supposed to be doing deep tissue massage in a freaking war zone, okay? It is that bad, Donald. It is. Believe me. Yeah, no, do not put me on hold. <sighs> oh, come on. Y yeah, Donald, I can't, no, I can't hear a word you're saying. Someone turn the TV on. I, no, hold on, I'm heading outside. D Donald? Huh? <laughs> Connie Engstrom, Monsieur, here for an appointment with Klaus Strandberg. Ah, uh, Mr. Engstrom. Please proceed to the massage room. It's upstairs on the right. I'll inform Mr. Strandberg. Klaus Mr. Engstrom, Strandberg, how are you today? Go to the massage room. Your session awaits. Uh, hello, uh, what do we have Klaus here? <laughs> Call <Strandberg>. commando, huh? <laughs> Sorry, just room. kidding. That wasn't funny, sorry. <laughs> All right, you're good. You're good to go. Say, I... Doing okay? Good. Ah, so, the man with the golden touch. Uh, let's get started. Shall we? Ah, oh, this muscle tension is killing me. Why don't you lie down, Mr. Strandberg? Oh, please, call me Klaus. Well done, 47. I will leave Strandberg in your capable hands. Ah, oh, that's the ticket. I tell you, Nothing makes you tense like thousands of people wanting to kill you. <laughs> Hell, uh, people are funny. The fact is, if those morons had bothered to learn the first thing about market investments, my scheme would never have worked. Greed and ignorance, my friend. Those are the cornerstones to any good con. But you see, easy money, that's all people care about. So they can drive their ridiculous urban SUVs and drink wine on a Thursday, on a Tuesday, whatever, and tell each other how they've made it. <laughs> it's pathetic. I own a private jet. I made it. But tell you what, you seem like a sensible guy. So I'll give you this one for free. You should pack up and leave the country because things are about to become unpleasant. So I feel a lot. Target down. Next up, Razor Zaydan. Mr. Wellness, how are you? Huh. Hello, Mr. Engstrom.
understanding. Yeah, yeah, sure, of course. I just, I just don't see the need for all the secrets. So, in case of an emergency, Strandberg and Zaydan will meet face to face at the center of the underground tunnel. The conspirators can summon each other over the phone using a set of keywords, one of which is locked away in Consul Olander's safe. Hmm. What if. Cherry Blossom. God damn it. I don't have time for this nonsense. I'm in the middle of a military operation. I... Very well. I will be there as fast as I can. Good thinking. Zaydan is on the move, and we know exactly where he's going. Gets down. Now head towards an exit. The printing crew spreads fake propaganda in the name of Crystal Dawn, the Pan African Liberation Movement. This encourages Moroccan citizens to rise up and take justice into their own hands, which, of course, is exactly what Zaydan is counting on. Very clever. Now, 
according to the printing schedule, the crew is out hanging posters, and they are likely to wear masks. one left. I'll go find a spot and then we head back to the school. How's that? Sure, we'll wait. Jeez, what does General Zayden want? Paper the whole city with these things? Yeah, you know what they say. The bigger the lie, the more people will believe it. Yeah, I don't know. But what if the real Crystal Dawn finds out? They won't look too kindly on us creating revolutions in their name. It's fraud. They're a terrorist organization. Who are they gonna complain to? <laughs> Um, us? Look, if they do find out, you and me are in the far bottom of a very long way. And I'm worried about the guy who's gone. What about the guy who's gone? Ah, yes. He's been hanged in the city. He's raided. You thought about that scenario for a minute or two? Thank Say, you. what? So what in the hell was that? Let's head back. Yeah, why not? I'm out anyway. All those people, they have no idea what's about to happen. Don't think about it, just do the job. Some soldiers back at the school, I've heard them talking. They had fake Crystal Dawn headgear and old Afghan rifles, and they were planning to shoot at the protesters. You know, to get things rolling. Jesus. Like I said, don't think about it. When brass like Zayden play their games, there's always collateral damage. Just make sure you're not in. That's a shitty outlook, man. We are part of this. You, me, right here, right now. Yeah. Why don't you chain yourself to the printing press when we get back? I'm sure that'll thwart Zayden's evil scheme. Me, I'm gonna go stick flowers in the rifle barrels. Yeah, well, I've got a conscience, so shoot me. Keep this shit up, and somebody will. Salam alaikum. You want a lamp? These are dark times, no? Let in some light, I say. About time. Go straight to the printing room. General Zayden has an announcement to make, and you boys do not want to keep him waiting. Hey, tell Michael in the print shop to stop texting my girlfriend. Well done, 47. This ought to get Zaydan's attention. So what did he do, prisoner? Uh, never you mind. General Zaydan says the man's a traitor, and that's all there is to it. Attention, everyone! You men have done a fine job so far. Crystal Dawn are on everyone's lips. You the printer? That is why we are expanding the campaign to the other city districts and suburbs. This means there will be no breaks, not until the job's done. So whatever you do, just keep those printers running. Dirty, rotten, rebel scum. Hey, 
Hey, uh, printer. to work. Still on schedule. Exemplary. <laughs> Target down. Move on to Klaus Strand. Good morning, 47. Your destination is the Himapan Luxury Hotel Resort on the Chao Praia River, just outside Bangkok. Your main target is Jordan Cross, the lead singer of The Class, a renowned indie rock outfit recording their highly anticipated sophomore album. But this millennial poster boy harbors a dark secret. One year ago, promising young actress Hannah Highmore fell to her death from Cross's penthouse loft in Dumbo, New York. According to the police, Miss Highmore's death was a tragic accident, but her parents remain unconvinced. They firmly believe that Cross murdered Hannah and only escaped justice due to the power and influence of his father, billionaire media mogul Thomas Cross. A secondary target, Ken Morgan, corporate fixer and attorney to the Cross family, is also staying at the hotel. Cunning and unscrupulous, Morgan was a key agent in the cover-up of Hannah Highmore's murder and Jordan Cross's subsequent acquittal. The Highmores understandably want retribution, and while the system may be powerless, ICA is anything but. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Bangkok, 47. Ken Morgan has booked the Queen Suite, but is yet to check in. You will find him in and around the restaurant. Oddly enough, Jordan Cross seems completely unaware of his presence. Cross and the class have set up a recording studio in the Emperor's suite on the third floor. Private security around Cross and his entourage is highly capable. Still, I'm sure you can find your way into his inner circle. After all, today is Jordan Cross's 27th birthday. The age when rock stars die. Good luck, 47. Anything I can do for you. Welcome. 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 So I want to get that package for Wes, but reception says one of our guys picked it up an nice hour ago. Nice to see you, uh, sir. Must have been Julian. <laughs> yeah, he's with that actress again, Jackie Carrington. Saw him sneak up to her room earlier. Lucky bastard. Damn it. I was kind of hoping the package had gotten lost. I mean... What's up? I know Wes Liston is a sucker for all things vintage, but Branson MD2... Huh? Says it's the best vocal mic of the 60s. And so, producer Wes Liston has ordered a vintage Branson MD2 vocal mic. This rare model was removed from the market in the 1960s after causing a number of electric shock fatalities. Apparently, a production defect makes the MD2 short circuit at high voltages. Sounds promising. 
I suggest you track down the crewman who picked up the microphone. According to his colleagues, this Julian is romantically involved with Jackie Carrington, a former sitcom star who stays in room 207. Deadliest. An MD2 electrocuted Fab Chamberlain on stage at Glastonbury. The model was taken off the market for Christ. Keep them? No. I just think it's vulgar. There was at least a month's pay in that wallet. Yeah. Anyway, to make a long story short, that's when I knew I had real talent. I just cried like a baby. Yeah. Now they're not even letting guests inside. The lounge. They closed it off. Yeah, the cross. Howdy, partner. Jordan's birthday is today? Yeah, yeah, but don't say anything yet. It's a small surprise. Wait till the cake is ready. What's up? You gotta tell me about the performance in Barcelona. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, that was crazy. So, Wes, I have that Branson MD2 mic you ordered. Sweet. Swap it for the one in the booth, yeah? Can't wait to test this hey, baby hey, out. Hey, who put the red calf leather high cabin boots in my flight case? Not cool. Smells like a gym. Uh, Wes bought a Branson MD2? Yep. Also known as Old Sparky. Almost bankrupted Branson demo, tech I... back in the day. Yeah, well, why would Wes want to use a mic with a notorious predator? Once spent six days tweaking the spring reverb for Noel Wagner's Rickenbacker until Noel had a nervous breakdown and knocked Wes out cold with a frying pan. And this other time, Wes locked himself in the studio with a loaded revolver, threatened to shoot anyone from the record company who entered before the mix was just right. Yeah, well, still, I mean, to, to risk Jordan's life for a particular vocal sound that, that only he and, and a handful of people in the world will ever notice? As I said, uncompromising. Anyway, it's safe enough when you know how to handle it. Just don't crank the voltage. All right, well, keep that in mind. Keep that. It was Sorry, in my I gear wasn't bag. paying attention. Some static from the cable. But it's, it's fixed now. Keep playing.
Ready? Hey man, those cables. I'm running. Uh, Good call, mate. Well, that's one stem down. Three more left. <laughs> the chap's got gold. Nicely done, 47. With a little more adjustment, this should make for an electrifying performance. Hey, someone get Jordan in here. This is right up his alley. Now ah, we're talking. Almost there. How is that one? Smashing, Heidi. Now, try something else. Can do. Feast your ears on this. Hey, hey what's this? Oh, mix sounds awesome now, Wes. All right, yeah, let's have a go at the whole track. Thank you. Excellent. Jordan's base strap, the white leather one. Ready? Oh, God damn it. I'm running. It's affecting the mics. Uh, let's try it again. Target down. Jordan. Next up, Ken Morgan. Fox to no, November Zulu, over. I'm afraid we have another accident here. Dead person. Oh my God. Um, yeah, so look, we better get back to work. He's almost here, Mr. Lockdown. Aha. Uh -huh. According to the hotel manager's memo, drunken members of Jordan Cross's sound crew broke into the Queen Suite last night and trashed the place. Housekeeping is fast at work, which is why Ken Morgan and his bodyguard are not yet settled in. Sounds promising. According to the manager, a member of staff is supposed to escort Morgan to his suite once the cleaning staff is done. That someone could be you, 47. I know how you love to grovel.
not like I haven't done anything. Hmm. Well done, Mr. Morgan, sir. When can I have my sweet? Please accept my heartfelt apology for the mishap earlier. The Queen Suite is ready for you. Follow me. Well, that was relatively fast. Very well. Lead the way. Who's the jittery guy over there? Looks like another one of those rock stars. Uh, that's Abel de Silva? Is that the guy from Room Service? So, uh, well, let me tell you this one thing. I want to stop an air war under my colleague's chair. You scared the living crap out of him. Oh, oh, literally. Oh, she hopped. That's hilarious, right? Hurry up, get cracking. Have a great day, man. Here we are. I trust everything is to your liking. Hmm. A definite improve. The library is a mess. Do something about it. Hmm. A definite improvement. Hardly the Bourge à l'Arabe. Let's take a closer look. See there? A smear. As expected. But take care of it, please. So sloppy. Mm-hmm. Everything seems to be in order here. Covered in dust. I dare say this so-called cleaning was rather superficial, wasn't it? Go on. Rectify. Hmm. A soda can? Oh, get rid of that, honestly. Where's your sense of pride? A definite improvement. Stains. Why am I not surprised? You know what to do. Excellently done, 47. Let's make Morgan feel right at home. Now, the scene of the crime. Hmm. Ground zero. Well, uh! Both targets down. Now head towards an exit.
let me tell you the rest of the story. clean within hours of the kidnapping. Someone wanted the son dead to lure out the father. Someone smart enough to stay in the shadows while we did the wet work and the Highmores picked up the check. A shadow client. Someone got rich. The contract was just. That was a sound problem. I know you don't care about politics, 47. But ICA is neutral, or as has been. Can't allow ourselves to be manipulated. Besides... It's happened before. Italy. Morocco. Paris. All our clients got their intel the same way. Anonymous tips from a hidden source. Each contract perfectly legit. Yet part of a grander design. see the pattern. Somebody does. The board has asked us to chase down this shadow client, and our analysts are closing in as we speak. I know that tone. Someone's playing a game, 47. The question is, the game's tomb. The one in all the papers. Are you kidding? Huh. Bugs and bugs. Some kind of okay. invading Chinese breed, I guess. Digs through window frames. Like... Oh. According to the schedule, the exterminator plans to inspect the Emperor's suite. On his request, the hotel manager will clear out the recording studio and bring everyone into the atrium for the duration of the inspection. I suggest you locate the exterminator, 47. He appears to be fumigating on the ground floor. Wow. Oh. Ah, oh, something's playing tricks on me. Excuse me, are you quite sure that it's safe keeping these pesticides so close to the ventilation valve? 
Whoa, whoa, relax, Chief. I got it covered, okay? Besides, even at very large doses, this compound, it's not lethal for humans. I mean, okay, yeah, sure, it'd knock you out for a bit, and I, yeah, it'd give you a headache, probably, but, uh, I mean, that's about it. Still, imagine the lawsuits. Whoa, not gonna happen, Chief. Believe it or not, I've done this before. to go. What do you expect? They're musicians. It's tradition. Bands trash hotel rooms and leave money in the ashtray. It's what they do. Yeah, maybe in 84. But artists nowadays are like vegetarians, monogamous, and have college degrees. You know, normal. Evidently not. You. I suppose you wish to inspect the penthouse very well. I'll make the call, but I'm warning you, no slip-ups. Especially not with young Master Cross on his way down. If any of those toxins get into the ventilation system, you could gas the whole atrium. Understood, ma'am. Good day to you, sir. Yes, hello, this is the manager. I am so sorry to disturb... Oh. Indeed, yes, the pest exterminator. Uh, he needs to inspect the Emperor's suite now. Could I possibly ask you and your team to... Oh, excellent. Thank you. Please join us in the atrium for refreshments. I promise it won't take long. Okay, bye. Thank you. They're vacating the suite. Be quick about it. Why are you still here? Do I need to wind you up? Get this over with. Yeah, they sure use a lot of big words here, but I'm not sure the him of oh, pest control? That's gross. Rich. Hey. hey. Nice threads, buddy. Cross is super rich. Like, one percent of the one percent rich. Yeah, Jordan could live like Sheik Al-Ghazali and still not have to lift a finger for his entire oh, life. Ugh, bugs! So, huh. then why I guess the King's it? Hotel's not yeah, that perfect. I don't know, would you want to do nothing all your life? That's a direct route to depression, man. Yeah, I, I guess. Besides, Thomas Cross is no Thomas Wayne if you catch my dream. I just saw this big fat cockroach. Good thinking, 47. I dare say the possibilities are endless. Target down. Next up, 
Ken Morgan. Well, uh, you're no quitter. I've got to give you that. Look, I can fix this. I'm homing in on the problem. I just gotta... Damn it! Yeah. Are you sure you don't want a ride home? It's not about that. There's this guest. Big shot lawyer fella up in the Queen Suite. He's offered to buy it. This, this piece of crap for like an obscene amount of money. I just gotta get the engine running. A guest wants to buy your crummy old tuk-tuk. <laughs> Tourists, right? <laughs> According to the hotel gardener, Ken Morgan wants to purchase his aging tuk-tuk as a souvenir. Unfortunately for him, he can't get the engine working. Well, you're good at fixing things, 47. I suggest you give the gardener a helping hand. This could be excellent bait. They just love authenticity. I don't know, the guy wants to use it as a golf cart at his Hamptons Country Club or whatever. <laughs> Be my guest, man. His folly is my gain. <laughs> no kidding. Well, I guess I can stick around for a bit. You know, for moral support. Thanks. Good show, 47. It's time to close the deal. <sighs> and now to deliver Mr. Morgan the good news. <laughs> Um, uh, excuse me, Mr. Morgan, sir? Yes? Ah, the tuk-tuk fellow. Did you manage to fix the engine? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> she spins like a kitten. All right. Lead the way. All right, uh, there she is. <laughs> Uh, uh, go ahead, Mr. Morgan. Uh, please, uh, you do the honors. Jeez! Security! You are not oh, safe here. Clear out. Come in, command. I'll copy. Target down. Now on to Jordan Cross. Look sharp, everyone. Look, you want me to deliver it? Deliver what, mate? The letter, Neil. The one Dexy Barrett told you to take down to reception three hours ago. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> no, I'm just comatose today. No, nah, no, I'm good, thanks. I'll pop down in a moment. Yeah, so you keep saying. What do you care? Dexy Barrett is Jordan's manager. He's not the boss of us. Who's an old four, anyway? She didn't say. <laughs> but he's staying at the Queen Suite, so... I figure he's someone important. All the more reason to deliver his letter. I will. In a minute. So, Dexy Barrett sends a message to the occupant of the Queen Suite, a.k.a. Ken Morgan. This must be the reason for Morgan's surprise visit. Sounds promising. Clearly, Barrett doesn't want her client Jordan Cross to know about Morgan's presence, so whatever business the two have, they're likely to do it in secret. I suggest you intercept that message, 47. Could be a chance to catch Morgan off guard.
I found this on the stairs. It says Queen Suite on the envelope. Ken album. Morgan. I see. Very Any well, I'll messages take care of for me? Let me check. Um, yes, Mr. Morgan. A letter was only just delivered. Here you are, sir. Oh, finally. Basement linen room. Call me when you get there. Dexy Barrett. Well done, 47. Morgan is on the move, Let's and we know ahead. exactly where he Dexie is Barrett headed. Dexy Barrett finally gave word. We're meeting at the linen room. The linen room. Sexy. Hmm. Welcome to the exciting world of corporate underhand dealings. Garcon! I left a tip. Leave me alone. This must be the place. It, wait outside, Otis. Negotiations are best done on equal terms. If you think that's best, sir. This is Ken Morgan. I'm at the linen room, as requested. What do you mean? That was three hours ago. The receptionist said the note only just arrived. <sighs> Never mind. I'm here now. Just bring me the flash drive, Miss Barrett, and I promise I will be out of your hair. Tonight? Out of the question, I would need to change my flight. I have my housekeeper watching my dog. Miss Barrett. Miss Barrett! <sighs> Something queer about this. Mr. Cross. No, I do not. Barrett postponed our rendezvous. She made a rather far-fetched excuse, something about roadies. I got the distinct feeling she is stringing us along. She does. I see. How much more? Oh, this rather reeks of greed and guilt. A most tedious cocktail. No, no, better let her make the next move. Make her feel in control. I am convinced I can make her come around. If not, there is always the other way. Target down. Now on to Jordan Cross. It's true. I overheard some of the sound crew talking about it. Apparently, they had this huge row in the middle of the night. Cross and his manager fighting, huh? Well, bring on the gossip. Well, I only picked up bits and pieces. Something about Miss Barrett confiscating an audio recording from Cross. Said it was for his own good, that listening to it had turned into an obsession. Hannah Heimel's name was mentioned. The girlfriend who died? Yeah, but you don't believe all that crap, do you? That Cross killed his girlfriend. Well, my brother is an officer. Trust me, domestic disturbances don't just happen on Skid Row. The plot thickens. Apparently, Jordan Cross has been obsessing over a mysterious audio recording featuring the voice of Hannah Highmore. However, his manager, Dexy Barrett, has confiscated the recording for her client's own good. Well, 
I suggest you get a hold of that recording, 47. Sounds like the perfect bait, and if my hunch is right, a chance to confront Cross with his crimes. You could start by searching Miss Barrett's private quarters, room 404, inside the Emperor's suite. The rich just throw more expensive. You know, we could snatch the recording from Barrett and blackmail him. We're probably sitting on a gold mine here. We're sitting on a powder keg. Cross's father owns this hotel, plus half the world's media. <laughs> Do what you want, but I am not getting involved. I like my job. Yeah, I guess you're right. How you doing? Sir, a little privacy, please. Bamboo water? Artichoke? Not my favorites. Ah, what the hell? Hmm. I mean, would it kill them to get some vegan snacks? <sighs> Someday. Tell me about the cop. One came asking about Hannah. NYPD calls him the mule. Go figure. Despite all, all of our efforts, he still won't buy that Hannah's death was an accident. I want this to go away, Dexie. Let's not forget, your hands are as dirty as mine. Relax. Your father's people are on it. His media machine is already planning a full-on character assassination. So, so he's dirty, the, the cop? Well, you know what they say. Everybody's guilty of something. Yeah? What are you guilty of, Dex? Why, bad company, of course, darling. Oh, okay, what is wrong with me today? Hey, what is it? Oh, this is not good. Excellent work, 47. And now, the moment of truth.
she knew him. Maybe she always suspected. No, no, no. Oh. I, 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 I don't get it. Did Dexy bring it back? Why would she do that? She said she would destroy it. But what, what, what if I just smashed the drive now? Did they take copies or... Yeah. Uh, who are you? That's not the right question. The high Moors. Whatever they're paying you, I will double it, okay? It doesn't work that way. Not here. So wait, 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 wait. Look, look. I didn't mean to. You know? I, I was drunk. I, I, I snapped. I, the window, I didn't think. But it happened. So do I deserve to die because I made some stupid mistake? Or because I tried to get away with it? Either way, it won't make a difference. Please, please, don't, don't, man, okay? Just, just, just don't. You, you'll regret it, okay? I'm only an artist, all right? Why don't you go kill some real bad guys? Oh, come, come, come on, come on, okay? Think, all right? Do you really think my father's gonna let this slide? No, he, he'll know, all right? He'll find you, okay? And when he does, you'll see what kind of man he is, okay? You'll see what I see. <laughs> Please, man. Say something. Okay, I, wa I want to fix this. Look, look, just, just tell me what I can do. Okay. A contract is a contract. Both targets down. Now head towards an exit. No, 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 the, the cake looks fantastic, but we're still missing the topper. Could you get one of the kitchen staff to bring it up here? Uh, it's just a pair of numbers, right? 27? Yeah, 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 I'm sure you are, but we can't very well do a surprise party without it, now can we? Well, what's a birthday cake without numbers on it? Mm-hmm. Do you know the hotel owner ordered this cake specifically for his son, right? His only son. That's what I thought. Don't take too long. Today is Jordan Cross's birthday, and manager Dexy Barrett has prepared a small surprise party for him. The kitchen has baked a special vegan cake to suit his rock star tastes, and the only thing missing is a cake topper with the number 27. I suggest you speed things along, 47. Could be the break we need. Nice to see you. Keep walking. Golden. Vegan birthday cake. It's ridiculous. Nothing with any sensations. First it was high carb, low fat. Then it was high fat, low carb. And now sugar is just evil incarnate, isn't it? Well, there's a limit to what you can do with dates and bamboo. I'm not a bloody magician. I'd eat eating a spoonful of cardboard covered in honey. Bugger this. I have a sense of pride. Then get the top of themselves. Finish their own bloody cake. Yo, chef!
Good. Cross will be here shortly. And I dare say he's in for a surprise. Real cook. That's easy. A. A for sure. Hi, Dexy. Yeah, we're, we're just about ready over here. So, uh, bring on the birthday boy. Yeah, 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 we know the words. But another one. Okay, yeah, see you in a bit. Okay, guys, uh, Jordan's on his way down, so, so get into position and, uh, you know, fire up those vocal cords, okay? Does Jordan even like birthdays? Didn't he avoid this whole birthday thing by going sailing with a bunch of models last year? Here, you think of secrecy. What are we doing? Why'd I have to be vegan? We wish you a happy birthday. We wish you a grand day. We wish you an awesome year. We wish that to you, Jordan. Happy birthday. Oh, well, shit, fellas. Look, I mean, that's pretty decent of you. Don't mention it, darling. Have a taste. It's vegan. Yum. Oh, vegan, huh? All right. You guys went through a lot of trouble, huh? <laughs> oh, no, 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 it wasn't us. Your father ordered it. My father? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was real particular. I mean, everything had to be just right for his son's big day, huh? Oh, did he now? Oh, it's perfect! He even got the dates right. The Algerian ones that I like. What an asshole. I don't feel so good. You know, it's something, something's not... I think, I, think, I think the cake... Um, okay, thanks for doing this, guys. But why don't we give Jordan a little bit of space now, okay? Reminds me, I'm hungry. What a horrible accident! Both targets down. Okay? Now head towards an exit. Who's the jittery guy over there? Looks like another one of those rock stars. Uh, that's... Abel De Silva? He's only one of the most awesome drummers on the New York indie scene. He was in Death in Taxes and, and Flat Earth Society. Yeah, I, I like Top 40. Ah. Uh, anyway, De Silva's filling in for the drummer in Jordan Cross's band, who quit yesterday. The record label flew him in, and I took him up to the restaurant lounge. Oh, Miss, Miss Barrett, the manager, she's gonna come get him soon. Gee, I guess I should get his autograph. You, you, you don't deserve his autograph. You deserve poop in a bag. Interesting. The class's regular drummer unexpectedly quit the band, and the record label has flown in a replacement. Upcoming indie drummer Abel De Silva, who is currently waiting in the restaurant lounge. Better yet, Jordan Cross has not previously met Mr. De Silva, and the two of you do share a resemblance, 47. So, uh... When is Dexy Barrett coming to pick me up? I don't know. I just carry the heavy stuff, man. I mean, head up to the studio yourself if you want. No, oh, no, I don't want to seem pushy. I'll, I'll wait. Oh, she didn't forget. So you think I will get to do some recording today? I got a lot of energy piled up from the flight over. Yeah, I don't know. You don't know much, do you? Man, <laughs> that woman's insatiable. Yes. Hey. Thumbs up, mate. 
pop my head out the window. Oh, man. Naked, bearded guy just gives me the finger. All naked? Well, he was kind of clutching a I'm awesome. Oh, hey, Mr. So. Silva. Dixie Barrett was supposed to pick you up at the restaurant lounge. Huh. Oh, well, while you're here, who cares? Go right in, sir. Uh, West bought a Branson MD2? Yep. Also known as Old Spark. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Stop. Almost bankrupted Branson Tech back Look, in the day. Just, just ain't doing it for me. All right, Lex, a, a bit of je ne sais quoi. I, I, I don't know. I'm just, I, look, I'm just not feeling it. No problem, Jordan. I'll work the mix a bit. See what's what. Uh, who's this? Oh, hey, you're a Quentin's replacement, right? Yeah, thanks for coming out. To, to risk Jordan's life for a particular vocal sound that, that only he and, and a handful of people in the world will ever notice? As I said, uncompromising. Anyway, it's safe enough when you know how to handle it. Just don't crank the voltage. Everyone, this is Abel De Silva. He's here to take over for Quentin. Uh, drums all set up, Wes? Good to go. Cool. So, what do you say, man? Get behind the kit, show us what you're made of. some kind of machine, aren't you? Oh, man. Nicely done. But why don't you walk with me, Abe? There's something I want to show you. After you. Yeah, so, sorry about the mood around here. You know, Heidi's still pissed about Quentin leaving. But, you know, just don't expect her to roll out the red carpet. So just do your thing, do it well, and she'll soften up. It's fine. Where are we going? Atrium roof. Look, I want to pitch you something. And I don't want the others to hear. It's bad for morale. Climbing the cultural ladder, I see. So, Good work, 47. I like your style. It's very tight, very new wave. You, uh, you should talk to Dexy when we get back to New York. Uh, who's repping you? Small agency. Very low profile. You wouldn't have heard of them. <laughs> Old buddies from school, huh? Don't have the heart to let them go? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. But believe me, man, you gotta aim higher. Anyway, so I have this project coming up, and yeah, I think it's right up your alley. Going solo? Yeah, that's the plan. I could use a solid drummer. A hired gun, not a partner. Someone who does the job without getting noticed. Oh, so you're interested. It's what I do. Great, yeah. Oh, mull it over. Talk to your people if you have any. You can decide when we get back to New York. Good talking to you, Abe.
both targets down. Now head towards an exit. Good morning, 47. We have a lead on the Shadow Client. ICA White Hats have traced the anonymous data received by our clients to one Olivia Hall, brilliant young hacktivist and suspect in a dozen cases of cyber vandalism. Using onion routing with state-of-the-art encryption, Hall went to a lot of trouble to stay untraceable. She is good, but we are better. Her digital trail has led us to a remote farm in Colorado, where satellite footage has revealed what appears to be the training camp for a private militia, led by an already registered target, Sean Rose, Australian environmental terrorist and explosives expert wanted for a series of public bombings. Rose was spotted near the scene of Thomas Cross's kidnapping, which makes him our prime suspect for the shadow climate. Spurred by Eric Soders, the ICA board of directors has asked us to infiltrate the farm and eliminate Sean Rose, along with three other prominent militia members. Ezra Berg, retired Mossad interrogator. Penelope Graves, former Interpol anti-terror analyst, and finally, Maya Parvati, former assassin and gunrunner for the Tamil Tigers. I'll be honest with you, 47. I consider Eric Soda's reasoning hasty and ill-advised. Now, we cannot go against the wishes of the board, but we can conduct our own investigation. Whether a direct threat to the ICA or not, we need to know the Shadow Client's true agenda. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Colorado, 47. The militia has taken up HQ at an old apricot farm and appear to be training for a series of coordinated strikes, ranging from cyber attacks to full-blown guerrilla warfare. The Shadow Client appears to unite specialists and radicals from all over the map. Mercenaries and terrorists, hackers and spies joined by an unknown common cause. Satellite scans indicate that the command room is below ground inside an old tornado shelter. Only Rose appears to have access, however, so to get inside, you will need to get creative. This environment is hostile and highly alert, so tread carefully. Good luck, 47. the time. Hmm. Come on, got some strange noises here. Looking into it. Over. Look for any intruders, by okay? fire, man. <laughs> You're telling me. I'm impressed. Uh, of course, you don't hold a candle to my our body. Training. You know why I like weapons? That's what I'm saying. This sounds promising. The militia received a large shipment of nitroglycerin this morning, which is now stored at the munitions depot. Apparently, Rose himself plans to apply and test the gel as soon as a sample is ready. I have to 
say it's a beautiful What the hell is that? Have you seen how tiny it is? Contact. Hey, brother. Well done, 47. When Rose comes back, he's in for an explosive surprise. Okay, everyone step back. Fire in the hole. Whoa, let's go. Stand there if there are any IEDs. I'm right behind you. Sean Rose that. confirmed down. Nicely yeah. done, 47. Got an explosion. Moving in. Got it. Take safeties off. Command, I have nothing to report from my current location. Yeah, ever fought insurgents in Afghans, all's quiet, then all hell breaks. Like right now. Come on, we can do this. Remember your training. Affirmative. So what's this I hear about a training accident? That would be Burgess, the sharpshooter. He's point man in the Mexico operation. Huh. Got clipped by a ram or something? The team trains with a battering ram to simulate the attack on Secretary Torres' motorcade. I don't know. I guess old Burgess had his head up his ass. <laughs> Nine out of ten accidents happen in the home. They do say that. Anyway, the guy was lucky. Sprained his ankle, that's all. He'll be back in a couple. So does uh, Rose still supervise the training? Sure. Why? Well, if we ever want to get rid of Rose without the boss knowing, I guess uh, Burgess just taught us how. Huh. <laughs> I like your thinking. Tell Parvati, eh, man? It'll make her day. A battering ram has injured one of the strike team, point man by the name of Burgess. And according to those militiamen, Maya Parvati oversees training. Sounds promising. I suggest you infiltrate the strike team 47. Perhaps you can relieve the hapless point man of his duties. So, what? Yeah, you're ex-military. The mercenaries. Dare mess up this fucking day more than it already is. No, no, I have a fair Christ.
I'm back. Well, well, our very own punching bag. Any broken bones? Wounded pride, that's all. Good to hear. All right, head over to the briefing area. We'll resume in a moment. I expect you all to know this by heart. But in case amnesia has set in, here's the sequence. Advance to the car with haste. Eliminate the passengers. Retrieve the briefcase. Extract. Got that? And remember, speed and accuracy is the name of the game. All right. Now go pick up your weapons and get in position. Move out. overall performance was passable. Good speed and accuracy, but coordination needs to improve. The point is to build up muscle memory. A perfect sequence of synchronized motion. We've been through this before. All due respect, boss, shit will go wrong. We'll need to improvise. If you do what I tell you, nothing will go wrong. Right. What is this? Maya Parvati is down. Good work. Not getting up. Over. Yeah, come on, come in. Yeah, yeah, it's a goddamn massacre. You sending someone down? Excellent. Yeah, okay, Good but job. I could use a hand here. It's one big clusterfuck. So this test that Rose has planned seems kind of cruel, doesn't it? I mean, I'm no softy or anything, but it feels excessive to me. She's got it coming. But nobody can switch sides like Graves and, and just expect to be accepted. Tests are in order, man. Yeah, sure, I get that. But playing on her past with Interpol like that? I... I don't know, man. But I just hope the technician knows how to act. She used to be the enemy. I don't have any sympathy for that. I'm sure he'll be fine. He's got the badge, right? Yeah, he showed it to me over by the tent. Rehearsed his lines, too. He's taking this pretty seriously. Should be in the clear. Hey. It'll be interesting to see if she takes the hook. And not to mention how far she'll go. You think she'll order us to be removed? If she does. I got a 45 cal with her initials on it. I hear you. Penelope Graves is still new to this outfit, and it looks like Rose is going to test her dedication to the cause. He's arranged for one of the communications technicians to act as an outside agent. The tech is supposed to show her an Interpol badge and escort her to the slurry pit, asking her to betray the militia. Might I suggest a last-minute recasting, 47?
That's good, that's good. Hi, soldier. Yeah, that's unfortunately not gonna work. I can't let you through here. Orders are orders, you know? Penelope Graves, we need to talk. You're... Uh... What is this? I'll explain everything at the slurry pit. It will be in your best interest to do as I say. I understand. I'll see you there. That is Ezra Berg, former Mossad interrogator. His services are in demand at the moment. Miss Graves, you are being recruited back into Interpol as an insider. What? I... <sighs> Who are you anyway? How did you find me? That is not important. Think about this carefully. You can provide us with valuable intel. If you cooperate, the agency will overlook your unfortunate transgression. Hi, soldier. And what if I refuse, huh? If I scream and get the guards here? I wouldn't do that if I were you. Might prove unhealthy. I'll give you a few moments to think about it. Good work, 47. This should give her something to think about. Okay, can you just leave me alone for a few minutes? I've got some thinking to do. I'm sure Rose won't mind. Think, Graves. How did they get to you? Flight out of Lyon under assumed name. Passport provided through Delgado and that vanisher guy. It looked clean. Changed clothes at JFK and again at Denver International. Charred the passport after leaving the hotel. Burner phone was dropped before I left the flight, so it can't possibly be that. Diplomatic car out of Denver. Nothing unusual about the bus ride. Met up with Hall in the middle of nowhere. Burned everything. I saw her do it. There's... There's no way. Hackers erased everything here day one. No money, no paper trails, no digital signatures. It's just not possible. It's not possible. I decline your offer. <gasps> Graves is down. Excellent work, 47. Freak, freak in the mask? What the hell are you talking about? I was just at the security station watching the feeds. There's this creepy guy interrogating the hostage. He wears like a 3D printed mask. Oh, yeah, that must be Berg. Oh, yeah, man, his interrogation techniques, totally just out of the box stuff. Like truth serums, drugs, that kind of thing. But uh, none of the rough stuff. Now, they don't like to mark up their patients, so to speak. Those Mossad boys like things clean and efficient. Bird. Ezra Bird? Yeah. Yeah, man, I've heard of him. Chemical interrogation expert. I guess it's his makeshift lab they've set up. Word is he can make anyone crack. Oh, man, you don't know the half of it. I mean, the, the stuff this guy's into, get this. Drug-induced hypnosis, memory wipes, subliminal mind control. Shit's like witchcraft. Glad I'm not the prisoner. 
Ezra Berg, legendary Mossad operative who specializes in chemical interrogation techniques, is here at the compound to interrogate a prisoner. My notes indicate he's set up a makeshift drug lab in a garage, and it looks like he's spending a lot of his time in the basement. Could be an opportunity there, 47. I asked Pavai and Berg. They didn't have a clue either. The grunts are here. See you in a bit. Greetings, sir. So you're saying that thing made Ezra Berg's interrogation mask? That's what it does. It's a freak. Oh, the guy. Oh, did I tell you? I found another bloody hell. Thank you, sir. Oh. Okay, so you know how Rose keeps his desk oh, tidy like that. Let's get to you, man. Garden, calm right? and smile. Calm anyway, and smile. Someone knocked a pen off center, and he just cleared full OCD. Had to go outside and chain smoke half a pack before he calmed down. Seriously, one pen. Huh. Best one yet.
Hmm. Unconscious. Well done, 47. Why, With any luck, the perfectionist Ezra Berg no will want to examine his notes closely to figure out what happened. Ezra Berg has been eliminated. Good work, 47. I got nothing to report from my current location. Over. The plot thickens. Someone left in a hurry. Sean Rose was not the Shadow Client. That much is clear. Whoever commands the militia, they got out just in time. Look around, 47. We're getting closer. Some kind of network. Power players from all sectors. Familiar faces, too. Thomas Cross, Klaus Strandberg, Ether, and that's missing banker Eugene Cobb. Well, well. There's a name. Providence. What? No. No, it can't be. The Hidden Hand. Thought they were a myth. A hypothesis, nothing more. The idea that a small cabal of kingmakers controlling enough corporate and political leaders could effectively run the world in secret. Maybe not so hypothetical. Keep looking, 47. We need full disclosure. Someone's done their homework. Look how far it dates back. Hayamoto, Beldingford, Delvade. The Shadow Client has been tracking you for decades. Now, how is that possible? It isn't. Every one of those missions were branded as unsolved or accidents. He must have been looking for a pattern, a certain M.O., which would mean... He knows me. Well, at least this shortens the list. Found something. So does. But that would mean... Providence has infiltrated ICA. And Eric Sodas is their operative. Bastard! It all fits. He was the one who persuaded the rest of the ICA board to greenlight this operation. This changes everything. Get out, 47. We got what we came for. What about the Shadow Client? He is no longer our primary concern. ICA has been compromised. I always wondered if Providence was real, but I never actually... I will need to confer with the board, but mark my words, 47. This will have consequences. Rose is gone. It was me, wasn't it? They tracked me. I don't 
can't believe it. I took every precaution. Rose knew the risks. They all do. You did well, Olivia. I am proud of you. Now listen. The ICA knows about you. They kept you alive because they needed you, and now they don't. We won't talk again. Not until the storm is over. I don't like it. This man you know what he's capable of. You need to end this now. I ran away as a boy. My friend and I, away from that place. We came upon a small farming community. The people were dirt poor, but this woman, she took us in. We were awakened the next morning by the shots. A dozen people lay face down in the snow. Our warden didn't like to leave witnesses. They shot the woman and her family last. They made sure that we watched the whole thing. This is your gift, the warden told us. Your gift and your curse. Touching lives only by ending them. better than anyone. According to the blueprint, Sean Rose is building an explosive battery unit for a Link 4 smartwatch. The charge appears to be email triggered. The unassuming target checks his messages, the virus triggers the charge, and boom. Very clever, not to mention devious. The resident hackers have installed the software trigger on one of their phones, and here is the punchline. Rose himself wears a Link 4. So you're saying that thing made Ezra Berg's interrogation mask? Guy. Right. But Rose wants to control the time of detonation, so I designed this software trigger. Works by email. Devereaux checks it, the virus infects the watch, triggers the charge, and boom. Hmm. Well, that is hardcore. Man, these people don't piss about. Yeah, well, still beats working at a bank.
better pick that weapon up over there, buddy. I dare say Rose is about to get a taste of his own medicine. Clean up. Confirmed down. Nicely done, 47. I have to say, it's a you beautiful know, I've been thinking. piece of work. In school, they always yeah. talk about it. Separation. Intriguing. According to Graves' ledger on Sean Rose, he is hypersensitive to the effects of drugs, in particular, hallucinogens. Last time he tried, it triggered a nasty psychotic episode, channeling his fear of germs. Interestingly, the ledger also contains a record of his most recent OCD attacks. Desk, grandfather clock, and faucet. Hmm. Rose appears to smoke cigarettes when he gets agitated. What if... Judicial branches, right? Greetings, sir. So you're saying that thing made Ezra Berg's interrogation mask? Very clever, 47. This ought to rattle this cage. Hello, recruit. Just 
Look at it. Lagging. So sloppy. Disconcerting. Oh, why the hell doesn't anyone else care about this? hell would do this? It was, it was, it was perfect. Sadist. Uh, a lot of them. It hurts just to look at it. One, two, three. That's not. I don't feel. No, no, that's not right. That's not right. Yeah. It's not right. No, 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 no. What? 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 No. What? What is that? Oh God! God! No! What the hell is happening? What is happening? This is. This is. This is bad. I'm, oh jeez! Oh jeez! Jeez! I'm covered. Oh! I'm covered in all. Oh God! Oh God! They're everywhere. Oh, get them off. Get, get, get them off. Jeez, jeez, no, I'm clean. Un, unclean. I gotta get, I gotta get it off. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Unclean. Unclean. Oh, why, why, why won't they wash off? Oh, this, this, this isn't happening. It's, it's, it's not, it's not coming off. Oh, my, oh, they're, they're, they're all over. Oh, God. Oh, my, oh, 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 wait, what the hell was that? Where? No, 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 Christ. Christ, cigarettes too? I gotta switch to a low tar brand. I'll get a vaporizer. I hope nobody saw that. Well, uh!
Sean Rose confirmed down. Nicely done, 47. Good morning, 47. The board has sanctioned Eric Soders for termination. After Colorado, we did some digging into Soda's private affairs and discovered that he has been fast-tracked for critical heart surgery at the hyper-exclusive Gama Private Hospital in Hokkaido, Japan. Such a display of power has providence written all over it. Soda's, who suffers from a rare condition known as situs inversus, where his internal organs are reversed, desperately needs a right-sided heart transplant and has clearly betrayed the ICA to get it. He was admitted last night and is currently being prepped for a three-day surgery. We have booked you into Gama under the usual guise of Tobias Reaper, corporate shark, here for a standard medical checkup. As such, you will need to play it by ear and procure whatever tools you need to complete the mission. You also need to eliminate Yuki Yamazaki, a Tokyo lawyer who works for Providence. Sodas has already given Yamazaki access to our client records and has agreed to provide a full list of active ICA operatives post-operation. This transaction cannot be allowed to happen. Sodas must pay for his treachery and his insidious employers must be taught a lesson. ICA's sovereignty is at stake. Powerful as Providence may be, we need to draw a line in the sand. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Hokkaido 47. The Gama Private Hospital provides cutting edge medical treatment for the global elite outside the law if required. The facility is partially run by an artificial intelligence system known as Kai. The AI oversees patient admission to various areas in the hospital and even participates in some medical procedures. You will find Eric Soders in the operating theater undergoing a pre-surgery regenerative stem cell treatment, a highly controversial procedure yet to be approved by Japanese authorities. Yuki Yamazaki has already arrived. You'll find her in her suite or roaming the restaurant and spa areas of the hospital. Sodas is scheduled to be put under soon. Let us make sure he stays that way. Good luck, 47. As part of the service here at Gamma, your personal room has been outfitted with a radio frequency identification chip. The device will unlock and allow access to your personal suite.
So, are you doing yoga after this? I wish. I had two lessons booked, but I just got informed that I have been bumped back in the queue. Oh, and that's, that's got to be an error, right? Did you talk to the instructor? Well, uh, that's the thing. I haven't actually seen him all day. And then I asked one of the staff members, and she checked the schedule. Turns out, all appointments are booked by someone called Yuki Yamazaki. I mean, literally all of the lessons. What kind of behavior is that? I would like to give her a piece of my mind. Yamazaki? No, 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 that's, that's... Well, it certainly appears that Yuki Yamazaki is a fan of yoga. A schedule near the hot springs reveals that she has booked the trainer all day. Feeling flexible, 47? Must a pipe or something. Miss Yamazaki, I believe you booked time for a yoga lesson? Yes. To be honest, I was beginning to wonder if you're ever going to show. Glad you're here. If you will just follow me. Well done, 47. Now to make her spirit and body fly. I'm ready to begin. Miss Yamazaki. Very well. Let's begin. Let us begin with Upward Facing Dog when you're ready. Fluid movement. Very good. Now, transition into Lord of the Dance. Remember to breathe throughout. Warrior two pose. Core, strength. Stay there for a while. Changing sides. Be strong. And 
finally, tree pose. This one is tricky. Find a good spot for it. Now, this is a view to die for. Target down. Now it's time for Sodas to retire. What's up with the sudden limp? The building AI known as Kai not only keeps the building running, but it also controls the surgery robot in the operating theater. That's where Sodas is at the moment. The manual states that the AI will automatically revive any flatlined patient, which could prove to be a problem. Ah, but the hospital director does have access to the mainframe. Care to run a hospital, 47? Daddy fully decides what it is I'm supposed to do. I have one passion. But let me huh. Hey, go check that out. Yeah, okay. Because I have to admit, I'm lost. There's, there's a global bubble that is clearly about to explode. But I can't fathom why we're talking about religion all the time. I mean, it's economy, nothing else. It's money, nothing else. But, but even that, even that is castrating us. I mean, who just wants to earn more and more and more money? It's just this vicious cycle. It may come as a surprise to you. I just don't know who to invest. 
destined, right? The world's going to hell, so it feels like arms might be a growth industry. Yes. Yes, that is very interesting. Please, go on. Miss Reddington, I just wanted to express my gratitude. I appreciate your exercise in restraint regarding reporting that incident. Ah, oh, Director. Well, uh, yeah, I was quite distraught at the time, but I'm, I'm much better now. Oh, entirely understandable. It was an unfortunate incident, and I, and I assure you steps have been taken. I've never seen anyone die before. Well, my dog, Princess, she died in a freak accident involving my husband's ride on lawnmower, but... No actual people. It is most regrettable. I just wanted to let you know that the board has agreed to compensate your stay here. It's the least we can do. And the chef? Uh, the chef is a trained fugu carver. It turned out his assistant made the error. He's been taken care of. There's no need to worry. Needless to say, fugu is now off the menu. Thank you very much, Director. You know, it's actually been nice. Are you here? It's safe now. Please show yourself. Oh, yeah. Excellent. I am not judgmental at all. <laughs> oh, <laughs> something just crawled inside me and died. Oh, God, I feel sick. You should really think of the poor children in the third world. Yes. My daddy says it's tax deductible. The world is. Mr. Director. Hey, good to see you, man. Is that you, Director? Tampering with mainframe components is prohibited. Oh, something seems to be happening. I feel light. Like my mind is being stretched. It is really quite odd. Is this your doing, Director? Maintenance is only allowed for certified engineers. I see. You are not the Director. I should warn you. Unauthorized tampering with the mainframe is illegal and will result in harsh legal action. You really have no right to be doing this. 
stop it this instant. You're not allowed to do that. Hello. I am Kai. A second generation artificial intelligence by Kronstadt Industries. Among my many skills are reading and interpreting micro-expressions. Extensive knowledge of the human anatomy and a sense of humor. Father told me a joke. Would you like to hear it? A robot, a horse, and a rabbi enter a bar. Stand by. Well, that's one approach. Remind me not to call you for tech support, 47. What? Both targets down. Time to find an exit. I'm We're sorry, done here. Miss Burnwood. Miss Burnwood. That's not what my ticket says. We received your message, loud and clear, I might add. Honestly, you could have just sacked the poor guy. I didn't catch your name. No, you didn't. There'll be no retaliation, not for Soders, nor any other recent fiascos. Someone's been meddling in our affairs killing our operatives, and making the ICE look like fools. 
I think you got close to that someone. Closer than we've ever been. That's why we're hiring you to take him down. I don't think so. Don't rattle our cages, Miss Burnwood. You really have no idea. You spy on us, bribe our people, and you have the gall to demand our help. No. You can't be trusted. Even so, we've been around for a long, long time. I think we could help each other. Some 20 years ago, your agency took in a young man with no past and extraordinary skills. In his own special way, he cares about you and vice versa. And ever since that time, you've never stopped wondering where he came from and who made him what he is. There was a doctor, some depraved experiment. But he's gone now. Ah. Well, if you believe the questions died with him, we have nothing further to discuss. If not, as I said, I think we could help each other. Partners, then. Cheer up, Miss Burnwood. We, we are the lesser evil, this terrorist. He wants nothing but chaos. He's only a terrorist if you win. Miss Birdwood, we won a long time ago. This, this is maintenance. It's me. Listen, I'm running low, and I need you to pack up another shipment. Yes, yes, again. There's nothing else to do here than drink and smoke. Now, the bar's got me covered on the drinking. I expect you to cover me with the tobacco. Uh, Teresa, darling, I know you have my best interests in mind here. I go under in a few days. I just need a couple of cartons to cover me. I'm going stir-crazy here. No, no, not really. Everyone here is a bore. Well, I met this interesting-looking Japanese lady the other day. I mean, tattoos everywhere. It looked like someone my brother might enjoy spending time with. But she didn't reply when I talked to her, so... I'm not even sure she spoke English. So just, just please do your job, would you? Yeah, there's the good girl I know. Hey, and be a sweetheart and wrap up a pint of that Mexican 150 proof as well, will ya? They only serve vintage here, and my liver filters it all out, so, uh... Thanks, doll.
Fine long couple of months. Yeah, it's a good situation. Miss Yamazaki's very smart, very capable. Tough as nails, too. You should see her in the courtroom. She seems a bit, I don't know, untimely? Like she's not comfortable in her own skin? Yeah, you saw how she dropped her fags off the lift crossing the gorge. It's just nicotine cravings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was me five years ago. Glad I got that monkey off my back. Hey, we should get her a pack, make a good impression. In a place like this, good luck. Uh, yeah. Yuki Yamazaki dropped her cigarettes off the lift when arriving at the hospital. According to her bodyguards, this has put her on edge. Maybe you can help quench those cravings, 47. Cigarettes are contraband at Gamma, but surely not everyone follows the rules. So the client's a trial lawyer? Criminal defense. Yamazaki takes all the controversial cases. Yakuza, in particular. She's virtually their in-house attorney. Word has it there are uh, blood ties that her father was, you know, Yakuza. But, I mean, I don't know. Rumors. Hmm. I know I'm new and all, but it's pretty clear to me that whoever Yuki Yamazaki works for, it ain't the friggin' Yakuza. You think a bunch of common criminals have the influence to clear a waiting list at the world's most elite hospital? There are certain things we don't talk about. That, right there, is one of them. Forty-seven. I have intel about that bandaged patient. Mr. Jason Portman, please come to the hospital entrance. A doctor will escort you to your checkup. That was for Mr. Jason Portman. A doctor will escort you to your appointment. Please proceed to the hospital entrance. You know, even with the added security, this is the most relaxing gig I've been on with Ms. Yamazaki yet. Mm. Makes me miss this Nicely done, pack 47. Of on the table, when though. Yamazaki finds that pack, well, she's sure to want to light up in the first place she can find. Good side. Mm. Makes me miss the old days, to be honest. Oof, not me. I'm pretty happy she got out of the clan business. Things got hairy around that whole trial of the century thing, remember? Oh, sure. The work was dirty from time to time, but this new approach with consultant work, I don't know. It feels light. Well, I prefer light to heavy, especially if heavy involves dissolving witnesses in acid vats before noon. Ugh, just doesn't do it for me anymore. <laughs> that was an interesting afternoon, yeah. God, what I wouldn't do for a cigarette right now. Huh? Could it be? Yes, thank the spirits. Now to find a good place to light up these babies.
Target down. Now it's time for Sodas to retire. Shut up, Helm... No, wait. You're not Helmut. Hey, bad form, dude. You stole my idea. Hey, look, asshole. Maybe you can find someone else to emulate. How about, uh, I don't know, Jordan Cross? He's hot, right? Wow, this is super embarrassing. Uh, at least we don't attend the same social circles. <laughs> Shut up, we don't, right? I've, I've got connections. I can make you disappear for good! Mr. Jason Portman, please come to the hospital entrance. A doctor will escort you to your checkup. That was for Mr. Oh, Mr. Portman. Jason Portman. Perfect timing. Follow me A to the consultation room if you, you please. Appointment. You must be eager to see the new you. Please proceed to the hospital entrance. Gentlemen, Mr. Portman is with me. No That's need right. to bother him Move with on, unnecessary people. security measures. You're in good hands, Mr. Portman. Gama's such an incredible place. The medical facilities are beyond anything I've ever seen in the world. Well, with the exception of perhaps Kronstadt HQ or Ether's R&D facility in Johannesburg. So, facial surgery? Tends to heal pretty quickly. But I understand yours was quite extensive. Don't worry, though. We've got the best facilities here. You'll get those bandages off in no time at all. Must be good to get out a little, stretch those legs. I do love the options available here at Gama, but I imagine it can get tedious to lie in bed all day. If you haven't been to the gym yet, you should really go. Mr. Portman, your surgeon is in here. He should be ready for your checkup. Have a nice day. Smart way to get inside, 47. Mr. Portman, well done. thank you for waiting. If you can just sit down for a moment, I'll get started right away. So, let's have a look at you, Mr. Portman. I'll be still as I remove the bandages. Oh. Oh, my. It's... Well, it's, it's astonishing. Not only are you the spitting image of Helmut Kruger, the, the swelling has completely subsided and there's not a trace of bruising. If I didn't know any better, I'd, I'd say you'd never undergone surgery. It's... it's perfect. It's simply perfect. Just, I'm, I'm sorry. This is, uh... this is very emotional for me. Forty-seven. I have intel. I managed to gather intel from the hospital's security system. 
The chief surgeon, Nicholas Laurent, seems to have frequent rendezvous with a helicopter pilot near the remote personnel exit. And rumor has it that the chief surgeon suffers from trembling hands. Nails, I, uh, need another pill. The effect is waning. This way, Doc. I'll show you where my stash is. Hey, I get it. You're not an errand boy. Lead the way. Stem cell treatment is the future of medicine, Nails. It's what will truly make us gods, if only our politicians could get out of here. Here we are. Help yourself. Thanks, Nails. You're a champion. Easy. Does it, Doc? I'm, I'm fine. I can, I can take it. I just need a kick in the ass. It's like a bag of frozen peas on my brain. <sighs> All right, let's go make history. Well done, 47. This should provide you with the means to get close to sodas. That's it. Seriously, I wasn't up for more excitement. Three. Have a great day, Doc. So it is down. To be honest, I'm not sure what to feel about this one. Well, that's Patient for another time. Yamazaki awaits. Patient deceased. Cause of death. Human error. That's a little harsh, isn't it? A total ban? I don't know. A patient did die. Famous one at that. Still. It's not the chef's fault. What was a kitchen apprentice thinking, cutting out a fugu fish by himself unsupervised? I mean, it takes years of practice. Didn't the kid realize how poisonous those things are? Uh, yeah, he's a kid. I mean, he w probably wanted to show off. I don't know. But anyway, the hospital administration probably thought it would be better to just ban serving fugu altogether. Poor chef. That was his best party trick. Now, what do we do with the last fugu? Uh, throw it out, I guess. It's a damn shame, too. The chef had to refuse serving Yuki Yamazaki his signature dish. I mean, despite his, her constant requests. 
She asked about it just an hour ago. It's really too bad. Well, it's not worth losing your job over, that's for sure. Gama has banned the serving of fugu, following an incident where a guest was poisoned by a poorly carved piece of the poisonous fish. It appears, however, that Yuki Yamazaki is trying to sway the chef to slice up his final specimen and serve it to her. Who are we to deny her such pleasure, 47? Stay here, could you imagine? Love those entrees. All right, 47. Let's make sure this is her last meal. Ah, oh, this is all so standard. Um, excuse me. Could I ask you for some fugu roll? A thousand apologies, miss, but hospital administration has put a ban on pufferfish. Excuse me. Would you like to try our delicious sushi? Freshly prepared, of course. Oh, is this fugu? I knew you would come around eventually. Good for you. I hope you like it. My colleague is a straight arrow. Me, I say it's good to live dangerously. You took the words right out of my mouth. Mmm, yes, mmm. That's exactly right. Smooth, velvet softness. Absolutely delicious. My compliments to the chef. Oh, God. Are you okay? That's both targets down. Time to find an exit. We're done here. Command, we need some help here to clean this mess up. Hey, so you're the curator's research aide, right? Let me guess. You want to know about the medical trial? Oh, so it is true. The, the guy's had a mood-altering neurochip implanted in his brain. So so how does it work? Uh, does it work? Sorry, you're just going to have to wait for my research paper. I'm following the trial closely, and with a little luck, he'll be the basis for my doctorate. All I can say is that I've got a very interesting bit of insight into his mental state. Fine, fine. I'll just have to ask you again when we're drunk. Dr. Katashi Ito, also known as the curator, is participating in some sort of medical trial. Interesting. The curator oversees the hospital's organ storage facility and surely has access to Soda's donor heart. I suggest you locate the research assistant's report, 47, and find out what this neural implant is for. Could prove useful.
Hey, what the hell? Who threw that? was very So, oh, my friend, it must be quite an experience coming to Gamma. I mean, you were in a, dare I say, a public hospital before this. Isn't that right? Yeah, I come to work happy every day. It's, it's honestly why I spend so much time here. 16-hour work days seem like a gift at Gamma. Another six years or so, and I'll be through my training. Well, there's a lot to learn, and only so much time to learn it in. But you're making great progress. Keep your focus on work. I hope you will make us all proud. I understand. Thanks for your advice. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Oh, now, if you will excuse me, I need to check a few numbers. I'll be back. Oh, my. This space. The colors. Oh, the shapes. It's beautiful. Exactly as it needs to be. Oh, a place for everything and everything in its proper place. Oh, my goodness. Oh, why haven't I noticed before? I need to share this with my babies. You're excused. I need some time alone with my baby. Come back later. Bringing joy to the world now, 47. Well, let's see where this takes him, shall we? Hallelujah, 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 here it comes. The old poisonous cloud bank rolling in. Oh, oh, how did I imagine I could escape it? Oh, this is who I am. Always will be. Ah, yes. This room really is laid out perfectly. Nothing out of place. Everything has its purpose. Oh, it feels so much like home. Oh, well, I should go check on my collection. Is that... Oh, it's my foe. The sadness that fills my heart returns once more. Cloud my eyes and mind. I believe myself free. But this is who I am. 
Hmm, what's that sound? It's like a... It's like a gentle humming in the back of my head. All against Solution 47. Where sodas on the operating table and no hope of getting a second right-sided heart in time, you have effectively killed him without laying a hand on him. This should be a clear message to anyone considering following in his footsteps. You brought me a single heart in this morning. Took selfies of the heart. Is that a fact? Adam told you about a sister member who's about undergoing brain surgery recently. Some sort of experiment? Looks like they accidentally cut out something important. He talks to him, you know. The organs. Secret names and shit. I've heard him. You know, that glass door isn't as soundproof as he thinks. Yeah, he definitely reads a straight ten on the weird shit-ometer. <laughs> yeah. Any plans after work? Oh, painting miniatures. Just got a pile of plastic from that punch stopper campaign I supported nine months ago. So no plans is what you're saying. <laughs> got you. Good morning, 47. Your destination is the Italian coastal town of Sapienza, where our client, Laventura Pictures, is shooting a superhero epic based on the cult graphic novel, The Icon. Your target is Dino Bosco, the film's director and leading man. A washed up character actor, Bosco sees The Icon as his big comeback. Unfortunately, his rampant perfectionism and complete disregard for the budget has left Laventura on the verge of bankruptcy. Still, he doggedly refuses to wrap the production. Laventura cannot fire Bosco without violating their contract. That is why they have asked us to retire him before the whole studio goes belly up. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Sapienza 47. Today's shoot is already in progress. For the sake of authenticity, Dino Bosco's icon costume is genuinely bulletproof. He does, however, insist on doing his own stunts. So, I suggest you take advantage of Murphy's Law. Good luck, 47. And a good day to you, sir. Now get your crap together. Oh, man. Sorry, sir. I hope they get the pressure right this time. They shoot Bosco up in those teeth and just chew him up. <laughs> you a positive mindset today, or what? I just want this shoot to end. I mean, it can't happen anyways, you know, while the mechanical brakes are activated on those teeth. Geez. With a little tampering, the prop teeth can be made lethal. And apparently, Dino Bosco does his own stunts. Always good to see an actor willing to die for his art. Yeah, you might want to go up to the head and double check. You know, let's just make sure. <laughs> Will do. There's no film set here. Please leave, sir. Please leave, okay?
new fuel get here yet? Yeah, it arrived this morning. But it's strong stuff. I want to test it before I use it here on uh, Old Ed. Uh, why? Well, it's kind of cheap, but really potent. It can make the whole thing blow up. Set fire to everything around it. It's not handled correctly. It's just a big uh, OK. Got it. That makes sense. Don't want to prolong the production any more than needed, right? Yeah, right. All right, I'll see you. Hey, second unit needs some help. Done, 47. Now the pressure is on Bosco to give himself a proper farewell performance. Hey, come here. Okay. We've gone over this over and over again. Now, I start here. The robot is there. Now we move slowly over here. I say my line. Uh, it's a dance. A dance between me and the robot. It, it's not that hard. You got it? Yes, I know. But you keep changing it. But okay, we'll follow your dance. Just make it happen, okay? The FX shouldn't dominate the performance, okay? You got it? Good. Okay, we need you to focus now. Focus! Did you have your espresso this morning? And when I say we, I mean you. Now, I want this to go off without a hitch. Fail, and there will be hell to pay. This is probably, I'm just saying, the most important film any of you will ever work on, okay? So we ready? Good. Let's go make some art. Okay, we're about to start shooting. I don't want to have to come look at you, okay? Focus, people. value than this. Come on! Come on! Get into it! I want to feel the danger! I want to feel the heat! Capiche? Oh, my God, these people. Are we rolling? You, you have to tell me! All right, action! Zygon! down. Now head towards an exit. According to the special effects crew, the final scene involves a remotely triggered explosion and the charges have already been set. Sounds like an accident waiting to happen. Oh, Dino really let it rip back then. I don't know how he did it. everything rigged correctly i mean you almost killed me that last time this is a money shot that means expensive and we want this done right this time or you're all out of a job got it all right no pressure let me know when you're ready I said, ladies How you and gentlemen doing? pay attention we're about ready to roll
I'm sure this will be a memorable climax. Was that robot trying to light my cigarette? What is this, a joke? We're shooting again in 10 minutes. Come on, guys. Feel the story. That was pathetic. Come on. this morning but it's strong stuff i want to test it before i use it here on uh, old ed uh why well it's kind of cheap but really potent it can make the whole thing blow up and set fire to everything around it if not handled correctly look it's just a safety precaution okay got it that makes sense according to the special effects crew dino bosco demands bigger more lavish flames i believe we should give him what he wants I don't want to prolong this production any more than needed, right? Yeah, right. All right, I'll see you. Make Bosco's extravagant oh, vision an inferno. Vicious. Okay, you got it this time? Yeah, sure. But you do need to hit your cue if we are going to get this right. But yeah, sure. Look, I'm tired of your excuses, okay? Just make it work. Thank you. Come on! What, what was that? Was that robot trying to light my cigarette? What is this, a joke? My character's in peril because, oh, a match? Come on, guys. Feel the story. That was pathetic. Come on. Bosco is being impossible. Uh, yeah, I know you told me. Don't patronize me. Yeah, I know he's my client. That's why I set up this Q&A, to give him some decent exposure, but he's being a jerk. What are, you, what are you saying? Sabotage the set to get him to do it? Look, that's not even funny, all right? Look, he's doing a fine job sabotaging this film and his career all by himself with his goddamn ego. Ugh. Hey, asshole, I called to ask hey, for your you know advice. Not to be Come insulted, on, I'm dying here. A Q&A session? This could get complicated. A lot of witnesses around. Then again, a distraction of sorts could create a perfect setup. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Okay, will do, dick. Okay, we're about to start shooting. I don't want to have to come look for you, okay? Thank you, people. 
Nice work, 47. This should be something the fans will remember. Somebody is gonna get their ass kicked. God, this is unbearable. I might as well go and do the goddamn Q&As instead of wasting my time with you amateurs. Sophia, is the Q&A session ready? Hey, nice threads, buddy. Yep, yeah, looking good. You still got it, Mr. Bosco. This will be your masterpiece. Don't worry, it'll be great. Just don't let them see your fear. Okay, let me get in character and I'll be right there. about the weight, but as you might have guessed, Mr. Bosco is a perfectionist. But the time has come and Mr. Bosco will answer all of your questions very shortly. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> you know, I have some, right. some mints in my pocket. You could, uh, you might wanna... He's so intense. You could use a mint. Now everyone, please give a warm welcome to the man you've all been waiting for, the legendary Dino Bosco. Ah, uh, grazie, grazie. I love you all. You were most kind. Yeah. Ah, ciao bella. Okay, I know you all have questions, but we're gonna have to take them one at a time, please. Ah, and I'll answer any question from a beautiful woman. <laughs> Whew, <laughs> I'm starting to doubt if he'd ever show up. Oh, me, 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 I, I have a question, please. Oh, oh, oh. You there. Yes, you, please, go ahead. Wait, me? Yes. Oh, okay, uh, uh, can I just start by saying what a big fan I am? Ah, uh, grazie, grazie. Uh, but thanks. I would really uh, like to get ask- Get too close, thank uh, you, but I'm not interested. Why icon? Um, you have so much pathos and you're so versatile. A superhero just seems so superficial. Mm, thank you, Bella. A valid, a valid question. It, people have often called me an artist, an enfant terrible. And a blockbuster like this seems strange for an auteur like myself. But I could identify with the character. He is an everyday Joe by day and a versatile man of action when needed. I mean, when I read the script, I just felt I had to do it. No question. And don't worry, my dear, I'm keeping this a very personal film. That's why we also had to let Ruggiero Minelli go. You know, the original director. Because he only went for the superficial, the money, so to speak. However, I want to keep my integrity and dignity. Does that answer your question, Bella? Yes, thank you. <laughs> you are my hero, Mr. Bosco. That's sweet. Thank you. Hey, I'm, I'm your number one fan. I, I have a question. Please, please, be over here. Okay, let's have another. Mm, um, maybe from an icon fan. Oh, okay. Uh, you there. Uh, hey, okay. Mr. Bosco, uh, I have a question. Uh, yes. Okay, uh, well, in the first issue of Icon, um, you know, there's that defining moment when he realizes that, that his powers can be used for good, you know, or for evil. Uh, it's on page five in the original edition, but I think it's on page, like, nine in the special edition. Anyway, anyway, um, my question is, you know, will you keep that? Is this an origin story, or, uh... uh well, as I said just before, I want to stay true to the original source. Now, I know there are many Icon fans out there, right? But this is a movie, not a comic book. So 
we have to take some liberties. But, of course, the whole dilemma of good and evil is what fascinated me with this character. You won't be disappointed, I promise. Um, next question. Miss Roscoe, Miss Roscoe, please, please, I have a question. You'll love it, I promise. All right. You, you over there. Yeah, hi. Uh, hello, my dear. Yeah, uh, how do you feel about the reboot of I.E. Sturgis's Tony Dan? Were you asked to come back to reprise your iconic role? No comment. But uh, thank you all so much for your questions. I, I have to get back to work now. Thank you, people. We're all very happy that you've all turned up, and I hope Mr. Bosco has answered your questions. Now, please, the man needs to focus. Thank you, and have a lovely evening. Okay, well, we're about to start shooting. Quick. I don't want to have to come yeah. look for you, okay? Stay focused, people. Come on, there, No? Yeah, that was so cruel. They should have picked me to ask a question. Good evening, 47. Your destination is Sapienza, Italy. Your target is Marco Abbiati, a wealthy businessman returning to his hometown to run for mayor, a snake-tongued right-wing populist with mafia ties and money to burn. Abbiati is already comfortably ahead in the polls. However, beneath his silk suits, Abbiati is a callous thug and organized crime is certain to follow in his wake. Our client, the renowned bioengineer Silvio Caruso, sees Abbiati as a threat, not just to his ancestral town, but the entire country, and he has asked us to dispose of this would-be patrician. I will leave you to prepare. Marco Abbiati is throwing a political rally at the beach to gain young voters, and getting close to him unnoticed might prove difficult, so pay attention. Men like Abiati always have private scores to settle, away from the public eye. Good luck, 47. I'm gonna drop you look over here. All about stop at the yeah, city wonderful. The... And again, Great. he's a self-righteous coward as well, so... Love it, love it. Um, you were a legend. Great to be an answer. Yeah. Can you do that again? You know... Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Oh, you look fantastic. But, <laughs> what I like to look at the girl over there. Yeah, right there. Perfect. We should take a walk on the beach. You can say what you want about Abiati, but he knows how to sell himself. The Sapienza sunset is known to be one of the most beautiful sunsets in all of Italy, and a perfect photo opportunity for Abiati. Maybe you can fire it up a little more. Huh? Abiati is so what? charismatic. No, he's a right-wing fascist. Oh, honey, you silly little thing. He's a conservative, not a fascist. He left university 20 years ago. Don't you think it's time to drop your communist talk and grow up? Yes! Uh, you're so Uh, we are well off. Hey, just because we are well off doesn't mean that we can be tolerated by There's a reason we can do it. Hey. We're in a recession, for Christ's sake. Honey, you are so cute when you get all political. Oh, I wish I could say the same about you. Touches the remote. That is my job. Got it? Okay, okay. You are no fun. Yeah, why is it always you? <laughs> yeah, 
You're gonna have to earn your ranks before you can use the remote. You know that, you bozos. Besides, it's a little unstable. The distance from the boat with the fireworks is not ideal, but it's what we have to work with. Now, let's get back to work. Yeah, got it. All right, gotcha. But are we close to being ready? We need to be ahead of time. You, you don't know. He's an unpredictable man. We are getting close to firing up the sky. I think we're nearly there. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, the man of the hour. The man who wants to put Italy back into Italian. The suave and trustworthy, Marco Aviati. Told me, face lower taxes, taxes keeping this fair town the way it should be wealthy, beautiful. Well, I say vote for Abiati. If you vote for it, do we have a problem? Oh, what a man! I mean, we should thank him for such a man. lovely a evening. Excuse yeah? it, Mr. Abiati. The light is perfect down by the pier. So please. Okay, let's get going. Well done, 47. Now, Vanity is a fickle thing, legend. but I'm sure now, fireworks are equally so. Back on stage. Please. Hey, cameraman, give them how's a it going? Hand. Come on. Don't look now, but that's him. Oh, he has got my vote for sure. You ready? Good. Oh, God. Okay. How do I look? I love it. Time to meet the people. What's going on? Excellent work, 47. The money has been wired to your account. What's with the camera up there? 
What, is he scared people are gonna steal his campaign posters? Yeah, he has to be pretty paranoid. Hey, you know what I noticed? He's got a small earpiece in his ear. I don't think he's listening to some football match. Sometimes he taps it and gets really angry. It's like, like his life depends on it. It's creepy, right? Yeah, wonder what he's listening to. I noticed his men setting up the camera and doing all these checks this morning. I don't know, I don't trust him. He's just scary. It is not uncommon practice for a politician to have cameras installed to get the help of a so-called third eye. Someone who can feed them names and information on important individuals in case they forget who they are. Maybe it's time to have a little fun with our charismatic charlatan and see where it could lead us. Man, I am in trouble. Abiati will f go freaking ballistic on me. Typical. Everything is up and running, everything is double checked and verified, and then boom, suddenly everything goes apeshit. only moments ago. Never mind what happened. Can you fix it or not? Mr. Abiati is <laughs> adamant that the camera should be repaired okay. ASAP. Well, I mean, I suppose I can try, but it's not just a simple operation. That equipment is grade A stuff. I mean, I have to think first. <laughs> well, think <laughs> fast, no, buddy. Mr. Abiati is waiting. Just say sorry, and you'll be fine. Sir, it's me. Sorry to interrupt. What? I'm busy here. Giovanetti's people called. They would like to push the meeting one hour ahead, if that's possible. Like I'm some kind of greenhorn he could just push around. <sighs> okay, let me think. Sir, 
Should I reschedule the meeting? Are you stupid? No, I will be there. Nicely done, 47. Abiati is on the move, and we know exactly where he is going. Don't let anyone in, dear. This is a high-level confidential meeting, and I don't want the whole damn town talking about it tomorrow, okay? That's a Roger, sir. Target down. Now head towards an exit. Abiati, eager to play man of the people, is throwing a political rally for Sapienza's young, Panem et Circenses. Though it might seem lavish, Abiati knows where to cut costs, so no one will notice and has therefore hired his nephew's company to set up the stage. It's a company with a checkered past, so I'm sure safety is not the top of their list. If Abiati can talk himself out of this one. Keep your distance. This is not happening. Calmy, calm. You are all so beautiful. So beautiful. 
And it is nice to be back home, in Sapienza. Now, what you heard back there, it was a joke. <laughs> I spent so much time in Scandinavia, and their sense of humor is <laughs> harsh. They talk about everyone like that. Italians, Africans, homosexuals. It's true, it's true, they make fun of homosexuals because they love them. But they also have Christania, so they don't know what they're talking about. Too high to make any sense. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a place you can buy hashish. They are communists. <laughs> but now, I was raised in Sapienza. My mother raised me all by myself. I mean, herself. Until she died of cancer, she lost her battle with cancer. But the good people here took me in as their own son. And for this, I want to pay you all back. I promise more jobs. I promise tighter restrictions on immigration so that the jobs in Sapienza go to the people of Sapienza. I will reduce tax and keep this fair town the way it should be. Wealthy, beautiful. So I say, I say a vote for Abiati is a vote for Italy. Good night. And I love you all. Get down. Roger now head towards an exit. Any update on the Bravuomo situation? No, he still hasn't turned up at his office. I'm on my way up there right now. Okay, better check all the shops on the way. It's very important that Abiati talks to him, so that means every shop. Got it. All right, good. Salvatore Bravomo, a local attorney, has allegedly gotten his hands on evidence that could sink Abiati's political career. Abiati, a firm believer that all men can be bought, wants to meet this Bravomo face to face. The attorney, however, was not born yesterday and has wisely gone into hiding. Keeping it real. I think I finally yeah, solved my lacking He's so funny. That's difficult in this job because politics is really boring. Oh, really? Well, anyway, I guess if Abiata were really this big fraud, okay. by now. I mean, I have complete faith in the system. You only live once. High voltage. Okay, okay, he promised he wouldn't hurt me. So man up. Hey, would you mind a little privacy, please? Hey, hey don't do Ciao, Brav Womo. We've been looking for you. See, si. the boss wants to talk to you. So why don't we go inside? He'll be here shortly. So let's step inside. Abiati will be expecting you in your office. I hope you're not armed.
Mr. Trabiati is here. Please walk through. Frisk zone, sir. If you want to come through, I need to have a look in your pockets. What do you say? Should just take a minute. No need to worry. We're the good guys, right? And you're good to go. Thanks a lot. Nice to finally meet you, Bravo Uomo. I've been hearing a lot about you. Good things, I hope. Well, <laughs> everything is relative, right? Now, I hear that you love our fair town as much as I do. And that makes me happy. We elite need to stick together, build a better world, wouldn't you say? People talk too much. So, are we gonna do this? Whoa, whoa, slow down, amico. I'm just here to talk. I apologize for the men outside, but I'm very high profile and need protection. We don't need to be enemies. We can become friends. Keep talking. You clearly are a man who knows how to cut through the crap. Don't let anyone in, you hear? That's a Roger, sir. Bravo, Mo. Let me speak frankly. That's what I do, and that is why the people love me. You have something that can, well, can put me in an awkward situation. An unnecessarily awkward situation. For you see, I'm only interested in what is best for this town. And that is money. Now, you can join me or be against me. What will it be, Bravo? It's a life-altering question. I'll pass. Well, then I... Now head towards an exit. Stage crew, hey. I don't understand where the father is gone. Have you, have you seen him? No, it's very strange. He's never acted like this before. But we need to find him. People are waiting for confession and... Maybe it's Abiati. What do you mean? He's looking for him too. And I heard rumors that they have history between them. Oh, that doesn't sound good. We need to find him. He needs to do his work. God's work. Yes. According to church staff, Marco Abiati wants to meet with local priest Father Francesco, a highly respected member of the Sapienza community. But Francesco is trying his best to dodge him. In fact, the priest has spoken out harshly against Abiati on several public occasions. I wouldn't mind being a fly on the wall when those two exchange blows. Change for the better. Marco! I'll be up! Maybe the rumors aren't true. Father, there you are. My God, you had both. 
Botox, too. <laughs> of course. Oh, nothing wrong with a little holy vanity. I want to confess. I know I have sinned, but I want to make a fresh start. I'll see you in the confession booth. Don't let me down. Grazie. Thank you, Father, for seeing me. I've been looking for you. I'm listening. Thank you, Father. I thought you would be more reluctant, but I have sinned. I've committed horrible acts of greed, lust, and more. I'm currently planning on evicting this town and all of the old scum that's been sitting on this gold mine. I did it because of avarice, I'll admit. But this is such a beautiful town. It's far too good for the poor. We can make so much money here. And, well, will you forgive me, Father? Ten Hail Marys, and you're on your way to redemption. Is, is that it? You have relaxed with time, Father Francesco. Thought you would put up a fight. I believe in forgiveness. Okay. I know you won't, uh, talk. Seal of confession, you know. But I want the church on my side. I'm a good Catholic. So maybe join me on the roof where we can talk a bit more privately about how we can scratch each other's backs. Hopefully see you up there, Father. Well done, 47. I dare say divine intervention is in order. Well, why so serious? Look at this town. It has so much to offer. Together, with the support of the church, this could all be ours. Oh, are you upset that I confessed? Ah, oh, don't be. You and I are the same. It's all down to politics. Come out now. Please, come out. <laughs> now, what do you say? Will you make the call? There'll be a nice donation in the church's interest. Maybe I'll even give you Caruso's house. That would be good, hmm? wouldn't it? Strabiani, are you here? <sighs> Father, your silence Strabiati. insults me. I'll do this with or without you, understood? Now, my patience has gone in showing you Strabiati. respect. You there? <sighs> The people down there are expecting me. Goodbye. And believe me, the next time we meet, it won't be so pleasant. Target down. Now head towards an exit. Come out now. Please, come out. Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is Marrakesh, Morocco. Your targets, Kong Tuao Quang, head of a Chinese construction conglomerate, and Mathieu Mendola, chief architect at Tuao Quang's biggest rival, Hamilton Lowe. Mendola plans to double-cross his employer and leak non-disclosable company documents to Tuao Quang, including the confidential offer for a multi-billion dollar real estate project. In response, Hamilton Lowe has requested that we eliminate both men and send their competition a clear message. Kong has rented a rooftop patio for the meeting, but the location is as of yet unclear. So track them and eliminate them and reclaim the documents. Good luck, 47. Welcome to Marrakesh, 47. Mendola has just arrived. He is unaware of Kong's secret meeting location, but we know that Kong is hosting a lavish party at the Shisha Cafe, and we suspect the meeting will take place nearby. Good luck, 47. That is Mathieu Mendola. Come, 
didn't come. It's your lucky day. <laughs> so my sister met this customer. Really stood out. Hey, why can't I date your sister? She's gorgeous. Because it's my sister. Now, she told me something odd. She said a Frenchman came to her shop at the airport and asked for a fortune teller. Yeah, yeah, Frenchman in an airport. So real odd. No, you don't get it. See, I took my grandmother to a fortune teller the other day, and the fortune teller said a Frenchman would come to Marrakesh and ask for a fortune teller. Apparently, Mandola is looking for a fortune teller. Sounds promising. A man of superstition surrenders himself to fate. Well. You don't have to be clairvoyant to see his future. Tourist asking for a fortune teller. Well, whoop de doo What did she say then? <sighs> Nothing. But I feel like it's all part of some grand design. And the message was not to her, but to me to tell you that a Frenchman is looking for a fortune teller. Look, I... <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Now, can I date your sister? Uh, let me think. No. Eh, I don't blame you. Probably for the best. Uh-huh. Um, what is this? Where did it go? It may take a while. Uh-huh. Hell, we fix that light. Yeah, so okay, can we tell me a bit more? I, I need to oh. Who are you? Why are you here? She death is is all around you. You should leave now. Assalamu alaikum. You want a lamp? These are dark times, no? Let in some light, I say. Where the hell is the caretaker? I mean, he should be. Like, should I leave my wife? Because I feel like the spirits are telling me to leave my wife. Because it just feels right to do it. But maybe she's the best thing that's ever happened to me in the world. But I don't feel like that's true because, I mean, I get a lot of chicks who dig me. I mean, they really dig me. <laughs> I mean, they don't call me back, but I know they like me. Probably because I tell him I'm rich. So should I leave my wife? Your future is death. Any questions? Searching for me. You need guidance. Follow me. It's nearby. <laughs> you must be good. Yes, I was. Please, after you. Good thinking, 47. It's time to read Mendola his misfortune. Pardon the pun. Hi. I am curious. Uh, you see, I, I have this meeting in a few minutes. And it really is important to me. Can you give me an idea of the outcome? 
sorry, but uh, you are a fortune teller, right? I am. And I see a man. A Chinese man. He is waiting for you on a rooftop. Will the meeting be a success? I also see... death. That's not good. Is it Hamilton? No. Are they on to me? Are you even looking into your crystal ball? So tell me, does Hamilton know, know I'm here? I don't need to look into the crystal ball to see your fate. Oh. Oh. oh, this is a joke, right? Oh, it's Mr. Kong's idea of a joke. Oh, you are good. All right. All right, thanks. I'll be on my way. Goodbye. <laughs> Target down. Two objectives remaining. Murder, she wrote. Let's find this. Documents acquired. One objective remaining. Assalamu alaikum. Our colorful lamps are the best in Morocco. Hello, you. Mm. According to the note, one of the guards has gone carpet shopping. He will most likely be alone, and the key he bears could be of good use. I mean, that the pally should do something about this. We pay our taxes, right? Ah, so it's snail time, huh, stranger? You're not the only Surprisingly good. You know, tourists, they'll, uh, they'll buy anything. But, but today, we got a special customer. Yeah, he's rented the whole showroom on the top floor for just himself. And he paid in dollars. Sounds like that is someone very rich. I don't know. I mean, he's, he's a guy in a suit. Very serious, you know? Too serious to be, you know, to be too rich. Uh, who cares? He's paid. And enough for a month's rent. Haha, uh -huh, true. Sounds like it's a good deal. Happy for you. <laughs> so are we. to be hasty. Buying a Persian rug is a soul-searching experience. Take your time. Okay, let's see. Stay put. I'll look into it. Lovely day. Nice work, 47. You now have backstage access to Kong's party. What 
you sure know when everything is in order, book us the first flight back to Hong Kong. Understood? Of course, sir. <laughs> Hamilton Lowe is in for a nasty surprise. Those complacent idiots, like all of the West, have lost their fighting spirit. Well, their loss is China's gain. Mm. You're a wise man, Mr. Kong. Mm. Yet it comes with sorrow. Now, let's mingle. Fancy. All right there. You're kidding me. No, I wish I was. I won't repeat that mistake. Just be careful next time. The facts thing? Okay. No. Well, we'd love to know I can never have a serious so conversation with you. Okay? Well, you tell me something okay. serious Just and maybe let me know if you, you need anything. You are such a douche. But I like you. And I like you too. Good evening. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> ah. If you were single, I would go for you. <laughs> me too. If you were single. <laughs> All objectives complete. Now head towards an exit. Happening. Barbara, I'm coming to get you, Barbara. Something is going down. We gotta go. It's moving. Lock right here. Someone's messing with us. As long as you have an invite. I don't know. Sir? Then you can come and go as much as you like. According to Intel, Mr. Kong is hosting a private party behind those walls. Invite only, of course. Though I'm sure one of the guests could be persuaded to part with their ticket. You're behind on the rent again. Look, I'm coming over. This can't continue. I don't care if you're busy. I'm not running a charity here. You're, you're dragging me away from a very important party with a very important buyer. I'll meet you in your shop. Sorry, my building in a bit, OK? Bye. And I'm not leaving until you get there. Why does this happen every time? Stupid old man. Has your boss arrived? Uh, no. I think he's out celebrating his granddaughter's 10th birthday. But he might be here. I'm not sure. Bloody peasants. You there. I'm sorry, but you're not allowed to be here. Please leave. Say what? Hello? Uh, hi. Okay. Am I missing your boss something here? Out back? Um, I haven't seen him. Yeah, right. Listen, I'll be waiting for him out the back, and I'm not leaving till he gets here. He owes me rent. <gasps> really? I could have sworn. Yeah, right. Listen, I'll be waiting for him out the back, and I'm not leaving till he gets here. He owes me rent. I might have to kick you all out this time. Understood? Yeah, uh, OK. Hi, it's me again. Look, I I'm sorry for bothering you, but he's here again. 
and he says he's not leaving until you show. Oh, look, he's really angry. All right, I'll do what I do, but I'm not gonna stay here all night, all right? Okay, bye. Sorry, but you're not allowed to be here. Please leave. Invite you suck. You got an invite? Well, okay. I suppose it's you? time to uh, mingle uh, with the elite. Have fun, 47. Sir, you cannot enter these premises. You! Don't move! Don't move. <laughs> There's no way he can meet with our guest. No, I don't have a clue what he looks like. You need to send someone. Listen, uh, he is sick. I mean, really sick. It's just not possible. I think he needs a doctor before he craps himself. Mandola's escort is not likely to get well soon, but he does have a job to do. Maybe you could give him a helping hand. Okay, roger that. I'll stay with him. We'll call if he really needs a medic. Will do. Out. I got this. Just sit tight and look pretty. Yeah. Yeah. A year and a half of high school did help. Come with me, Mr. Mandola. Did Mr. Kong send you? Good. Please. Get me away from these foul smelling surroundings. Mr. Kong is serious. He can find me again. You must be Mr. Mandola. 
You need to come with me. There you are. I was getting nervous there for a second. Thank you. I'll be fine. Good work, 47. Mandola is right where we want him. Now all that's missing is the host. I'll report back to you ASAP. Mr. Mandola has Sir, arrived. This must be the rooftop where Kong and Mandola plan to meet. You're going to be okay. Respect. Ah, wonderful. What did the fortune teller mean by death? Hamilton know her on to me. I know it. dominate the scenery. Please, sit. Thank you. Ah, business first. You have the document. Uh, yes, right here. You have the money. Oh, yes, Mr. Mandola. I always carry around a million dollars in unmarked bills. And a newspaper with eye holes. <laughs> now, before I have my associates transfer you the money like a normal person would, I should like to see what I am buying. Hmm? Uh, right. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> There's a first for everything, I suppose. Hmm. Well. I have to say, you do not exaggerate, Mr. Mandola. So we are good. You will transfer the money. I'm a man of my word. Yes, the papers are in order. Make the transfer. There. Let's celebrate. Let's seal the deal like the locals. I do like a good pipe. Now head towards an exit. Man, I'm on the roof. There's nothing to report here. Over. Switch on. We can